Hello everyone and welcome to TPK Roleplay. Tonight we bring you another one of my secret one-shots. Um, if you've read the Going Live tweet, you now know the title, which I usually leave out until uh, we're going live. So no sneaky players look it up and kind of get an idea. As well, uh, we are starting in a very unique place that no D&D &D campaign ever starts or one shot ever starts. So first we will introduce you to ourselves and then we will get right into it. So I am Kohlrabi, I will be your dungeon master for today. Uh, players, if you want to go in overlay order. Uh, and just introduce yourself by your name and what you are playing. Um, extra details and things like that we'll be able to get into once we get into the actual role play of the episode. So go ahead, starting with Martyr. Hello, everybody. I am Martyr, and I have played in quite a few uh, things like this. And this is my first time with Cole as my DM. And I will be playing a bard. A bugbear bard. Did you decide how to say the name? Yes, Bozen. Bozen okay. is the name. All right, I like Bozen. I like Bozen. All right, up next would be. Your resident goth. That's me. <laughs> uh, all right, hi, my name is Harley. Uh, I'm gonna be playing a Triton druid named Siren. Very creative, I know. Um, yeah, uh, this is also my first time having Cole as my DM, so that's all for me. Uh, a thousand glorious mornings. I am uh, Proper Nerdy, aka Nick. Uh, I'll be playing Caleb, which you might remember from one of Cole's other one shots. Um, so I'm excited to bring him back. Um, and he's lovely, so he'll be joining the party today. Hey, y'all. I am. Um... <laughs> Hey y'all, I am Meg Mysteria. You can just call me Meg, that's fine. Um, you probably know me most from Henshin Go, which is on hiatus right now, but hopefully we'll be back to that soon. But tonight, this is, hey, I guess my first time with Cole's my DM as well, but um, I will be playing Joan Arclay, a ASMR, ASMR, I think is how you pronounce that, uh, Wandering Knight. So that should be fun. Yes, it'll be it'll be very interesting. I don't think I've ever played with or DM'd for that class at all. So should be super interesting. So let us get into some of the information. So our our party finds themselves responding to a job posting. Um, now each of you may come from a different village, you may be traveling, um, but for some reason each and every one of you has found the same uh, request of a, a job of sorts. Um, the first information you get is there is a small village called uh, Quarvar, and uh, the villagers have long always respected the forest, um, but recently there have been tales of people going missing, um, game is short in short supply in the town because, you know, where do you go to hunt? You go to the forest, and uh, if people are going missing in the forest, people are probably less likely to want to go hunt. Um, as well, livestock, weirdly enough, has gone missing in the village as well. So the town is, uh, is very, very hard up for a solution. Um, it's really about all you know. Um, you all head towards Quarvar, where you've been instructed to go to the tavern to kind of set up for the time you're going to be there and to learn anything further about uh, the forest and what it is that these people are offering gold for you to do. So we open upon a tavern. Like I said, no campaign or one shot has ever started here before. So you guys either walk in, you're already established and sitting down, 
it's open to you guys now. All right. I would say that Caleb is already in the tavern. He is always early, um, unlike his player. Um, and so he is sitting by the fire, reading a book, or no, sorry, re writing in his journal um, and drinking the most unalcoholic beverage they have on stock. All right. Uh, I'm going to say Siren's already in the tavern as well, uh, sitting kind of in the middle, like, as, as in the center of the tavern as you can be. Uh, as in front of her, she has um, a nice mug full of water, and she's just kind of using shape water to make little cool shapes out of it and everything. She's very focused in what she's doing. She looks like she's having a good time doing this. Well, so I'm also going to say that Joan is already in the tavern. She is probably sitting at the bar and has been drinking for a hot minute now. <laughs> but, um, sorry, were you going to continue? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Bozen was not already at the tavern. Yes. Hey. And he busts open the door and walks in. Behold. I am Bozon the Bard. <laughs> I have come because I've heard there is gold to be had. And <laughs> they just look around and like, people are shit here. Pleasure to meet you, Bozon. <laughs> there is gold in every glorious morning. How can I help you? Well, there has been a plight apparently in the region. <laughs> and I have come to find out why, and the gold, mainly the gold, though. Are you also in search of a voice coach? Because I feel like you need one. Oh! <laughs> oh. Ow. Oh! And it, it's funny that you ask this. Uh, I'm afraid that this is an affliction and not a style choice. My uh, thousands of thousands of apologies. Thank you. So while you guys are having this conversation, um, if you've been here or you're just entering, you notice that the Whistling Stag is where you are. Um, you might have seen it on the sign outside or on some of their very nice uh, wooden menus or whatever menus were made out of. I'm going to say they're wood. Uh, this is a logging related town, so you know, thick wood. They haven't quite developed how to make thin wood, aka paper, yet. Uh, so that's canon, we're going with that. Um, this is a bustling and uh, well-looking tavern. Um, the area is a small logging settlement and you find yourself in the tavern. Despite the size of the town and emphasis on practicality, you find that there are incredibly diverse clientele. Many humans, half elves, and even some dwarves are drawn here um, by the world-class entertainment. Uh, they sometimes tend to stay because of the atmosphere and exciting culinary creations. Uh, so Quarvar and the Whistling Stag are kind of like this day and age, uh, ages very old-timey truck stop where you can get just about everything. We're at ye old 7-Eleven, is what you're saying. Yeah. No, it's, it's more than a 7-Eleven. This is like, if you've it's ever... It's a Wawa, then. No, no, it's a truck stop. <laughs> like, if you've ever been to Bucky's, any Bucky's fans out there, it's like a Bucky's. I've never been, but I know about it. I've run out of yeah. references. I don't know any like, truck this stops. This isn't a 7-Eleven, this is an 8 -12. Maybe? <laughs> sheets, perhaps, maybe. Oh, so that means they have that, like, that dope-ass biscuits and gravy that's been sitting in there for a while that you just, like... Yeah. It's like, grab it yourself. So there's like freaking gravy all over the place of people doing their own spoonfuls. Sure, there's uh, <laughs> it's like those truck stops that have you know you can purchase showers and stuff like that in a nice little private shower. It's it's pre pretty fancy. There's a little bit of something for everyone. Um, wow. As you guys start talking, you're just open. Your your job posting basically just says. Come to Quarvar, come to the Whistling Stag, and we'll give you more information if you seek gold.
Who shall I request to talk about this other request that's on this <laughs> thing for my gold? Alright, so you're, you're just cutting straight to it and just yelling, a, a, like, yeah. who will give me more information? Yes, I have came here for the gold, and I think I made that clear. I have right, a question. Gonna... <laughs> oh, okay. We allowed to swear on stream? Yes, swearing is fine. <laughs> oh, Jones's mother's fucking bards fucking... into our class. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Har uh, yeah, I don't have character names up right in front of me. Uh, well, Siren, Bozen. you said something. Yeah. No, um, as he's like sing yelling, I, I'm not sure how to describe it. Um, I'm going to like look, I don't know where he is in relation to me. Uh, I'm just gonna look over in his direction and uh, noticing that he has like a little bit of a sing-songy tone to it, I'm gonna form uh, two hands with the water and just... Why, thank you, my lady. <laughs> you may call me Triple B. Triple B? I am Bozon the Bugbear Bard. <laughs> the uh, hands then kind of form together and make three Bs in a line. <laughs> nice, fancy trick. As uh, you guys are talking and you yelled out um, looking for more information, um, a human male actually walks up to you. Um, as he's first walking up, you see that he has very blonde hair, um, really nice fancy clothes, and uh, he has ornate jewelry. He's like that guy, I, I haven't watched- He a pimp daddy. I haven't watched Uncut Gems, but I've seen plenty of pictures. You know, Adam Sandler's like decked out with all these rings and necklaces. That's basically this guy. And Oh, he's uh, blonde. It must mean he's royalty then. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, he uh, walks up to Bozin and he says, Yes, are you here about the job posting we sought out? Yes, I am, man of great taste. And is it just you and alone? Well, I came in alone, but this man has been following me around and harassing my boys. While it pains me, <laughs> I am also here for the same quest. Um, mostly of the auditory pains, that is. And then I'm gonna kind of put a hand up. I'm here too, for the job posting. Oh, I see. So, three brave adventurers? Is, is that all that uh, has come of our posting? Uh, and we'll set the mug down on the bar and then just turn in her seat and say, I'm interested too, and if you're looking for more people. Oh, well, I can't see that it would hurt. You look very capable. Uh, some fine armor and, you know, what, what two habits you have there. I guess I can just uh, tell you guys real quick what the offer is. Have you heard stories of the forest around these parts? I do I believe it's full of trees. <laughs> yes, that is quite true. Beyond that, um, I'm a bit lacking. Oh, let me regale you in a tale. So, you are standing in the Whistling Stag, in the heart of Quarvar, a great city. Some may call it a village, I call it a city. It is more grand than just a village. <laughs> you see, there are once two men that tracked an exotic white heart. A pelt from such a beautiful and rare creature would mean that the pair would earn enough to retire from the hunt, at least for a while. They pursued the lithe creature far deeper into the forest than they had ever dared. As they closed in on their prey, backing it into a swampy mire, the heart suddenly charged towards them. This was unexpected and sudden movement. It caught the huntsmen by surprise, caused, causing both of them to miss their shot. As they turned from the fleeing beast, they saw several seats, sets of snapping teeth emerge from the muck. 
as one ran through the forest with cries of his partner at his beck, familiar paths became confused. Trees seemed to rearrange themselves, and the canopy choked out the sun as the screams grew silent. And that is the last we ever heard of that huntsman's partner. Stories like this are far too often. As well, we have livestock that has gone missing. We have other villagers or adventurers that sought to challenge the forest and they didn't come back either. I would pay each of you handsomely if you were willing to check out what's in the forest and maybe get rid of whatever is doing all of this. Define handsomely. Oh, I would be glad. You seem like a man of substance as myself. Uh, I will offer a party such as yourself 800 gold pieces. A piece? The party. <laughs> That's 200 each. That is a handsome reward for merrily going into a forest and finding out why people are going missing, I would say. Ah, uh, yes. Go into the forest that hasn't returned any of the people who've wandered, in, wandered into it. So, honestly, I need the money, so I might as well. Can't travel around the countryside by myself. I have no problem with this. Oh, you Christ. almost be some very poor people. Hey, can we see I live the in the ocean. Uh, I live in the ocean. What did you uh, say, Meg? <laughs> Can we see the money first so we know you're not bullshitting us? Oh, well, of course. Do I look like someone who doesn't have the coin? And what, what not, was of it? Of course he does. What was it that you questioned Water Witch uh, over there? Pointing at Siren or Siren. Uh, I don't have any objections. I'm just kind of sitting there. Oh, well, Bozin, as you so clearly shouted your name. Uh, did you suggest that we are poor? Not you. I am <laughs> suggesting that these two are very poor for taking on such a high risk job because they need the money. Uh, are you saying the money is not enough for you? I... kind of. <laughs> um, roll, roll a charisma check. Okay. Just a charisma check in general? Yep, yep. Uh, persuasion, sorry. Persuasion, persuasion. Okay, that will be a dirty 20 in persuasion. Oh, nice. Hey. He, he looks you up and down and he says, Well, if you don't think that purse is handsome enough, I will up it to 1,000 gold if each of you make it back alive. I do see that very much more fitting. And he, he pulls out a big... Uh, big pouch of coin and, you know, jostles it. He says, I'll tell you what. I'll give you 200 gold for the party right now just for accepting the job. And I will give you the rest upon completion. I have no objection. Word. Oh, so great to hear. You see, I tried to pay this famous ranger one time. He just scoffed at me. And he mumbled something about making things right, and he went off into the woods. I haven't seen him since. Ooh, that sounds like an omen if ever I heard one. So, and I've heard of many. So, um, <laughs> after you all agree to this, uh, he shakes each of your your hands if you allow it and he says my name is Torsten by the way it's a pleasure to meet all of you I am you know one of the one of the people here that uh, you might say I help run the town I guess to, I don't mean, you know, yeah I just do things here and there if you need anything I am a jack of all trades I can probably help you out or at least point you in the right direction This well, is a different guy from the other guy? No, this is the same one, Torsten. Oh, same guy. Torsten. Torsten. Yes, Torsten. 
Tour? I think we're saying different things. Can we type it in the chat real quick? <laughs> yeah. Tour Stein. That's what I got. I'm saying it's this. Okay. I had it right. Okay. With a T. Yes. Uh, close enough. Tour skin? <laughs> 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 and uh, as as you guys agree and whatnot, um, he's like, "Well, if you have any questions, I'll be over there." And he goes and kind of sits down at a table um, with a couple other gentlemen. Um, but that's that's the deal he's given you so far. Uh, you're in the tavern. Um, he didn't really provide much more information than you know trying to hire a ranger. That's about all he really gave you so far. As a matter of fact, I need not plentiful gold, for I am rich in the love of Xander. His light touches all and blesses each one of us. I think uh, we should continue into the wood before it gets too dark. Tony I rolls our eyes. <laughs> gladly take your share. Uh, all right. We'll see if you get out of the forest alive. <laughs> <laughs> Why must you make a bugbear cry? Hey. Right. All right. Uh, uh, is done. everyone Should've... just ready to set off, or what are you all kind of thinking? Ah, uh, I'm good to go. Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right. Sounds like everybody's in agreement. So yeah, you made you made good time um, to the village of Quarvar, and uh, you still have a good amount of daylight to set off into the forest. So that is exactly what you do. Um, I will give you a little more here as you make it through. And you are now entering the forest. And I will change all this. Um, for the first day, the forest is quite lovely. Um, you're having a grand old time. You're not really seeing what, what the big deal is, you know? But people go missing in such a lovely forest as this. You, you hear the birds singing. You almost feel like you can hear the twinkling of the sunlight. Uh, but you do make it to a part where the sun starts to go down and fall behind the trees. This would be <clears throat> a great time to set up camp for the night. Um, as a quick point before we get much further, I'd like to say that uh, Caleb is been, has been marking the trees one by one. Not one by one, but, you know, as they go along the path, just with his dagger, just in case he needs to retrace his steps. Okay, great idea. Um, yes, you guys oh, are setting up camp unless you're refusing to set up camp and you're going through the night. I think here is as good as of any place to spend the night. Mm -hmm. Green, I don't want to get turned around in here. I am an early riser, so I do, I would take uh, first, I mean, last watch if you want. Uh, I can, did anybody claim first watch? Uh, Feel, nobody said anything. Feel free. All right, I'll do that. All right, so we have our watches designated. Um, so we have, did you say it's Siren? Siren, yeah. Okay, so we have Siren first, who's second? Uh, How many are there? I assume there's only like three. Yeah, you can just do it in order. You don't have to worry. We'll just, it. whatever the order is, that's what you divide by eight, do math. We don't got to do it. Don't. I'm gonna do second watch. <laughs> second watch, okay. Jones got second watch. And that would be Bozen third and Caleb fourth. Okay, Caleb fourth. All right, so before you guys set off to your watch and sleeping, uh, I would assume you make a nice cozy little fire in this beautiful forest. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah, the, oh. the fire is crackling. You still hear the wonderful sounds of birds and different little cute little woodsy creatures running around. Um, this, this would be a great time to kind of sit around the fire and talk amongst yourselves if you want um, and kind of describe your character a little more. Um, I mean, you don't have to. Someone can go straight to bed if they're that kind of person. But it is a very lovely forest with a very lovely fire and, you know, tends to bring things out of people. Um, I will say that you can probably tell all you'll need to know about uh, Caleb from the way he acts as opposed to what he says. He is going to go to bed fairly shortly, but he does take a lengthy amount of time to light several candles and do some uh, nighttime prayers uh, before going to bed. Um, Caleb is ungangly tall um, and just kind of all skin and limbs, and um, that makes him sound like a monster. Anyway, um, <laughs> but he is a, a very devout uh, man who follows the god of um, our little homebrew god of Xander, um, who is the god of light and morning. So um, hey. he he makes lots of little like religious uh, prayers and a few um, reconciliations before sleep, going to sleep um, rather early, probably before the le- the night uh, the sun sets. Good note. What is everyone else doing? Um, I am going to be touching up my uh, mace, cleaning it off. Not that there's really anything on it. Um, I might be going around picking like wildflowers, waving them together into a little crown of some sort, druid thing. How cute. While you're frolicking around doing that uh, Beezlebub or you know whatever the bard's name was Bozen <laughs> um, Beezlebub just popped Beezle in my Bob. head for a second <laughs> Triple B yeah Triple B Who's on, uh, uh, Neutron, Proton, B. something like that <laughs> you, uh, you hear in the trees Hey bard play us a song Oh I don't think you would care for much of that <laughs> really truly in a different part in the trees, you hear, Hey, come on, man, play us a song. Who the hell are you people? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> we are over here trying to do camp <laughs> stuff. Go away. Yeah, but I feel like a campfire song would be great right about now. Oh, great. Uh, fine. Caleb, Caleb uh, is just beginning to fall asleep and instead... Uh, grabs some wax from a candle and puts it in his ear for <laughs> continuing. I just yeah. slap my drum in my lap. And I'll start the campfire song. All right. Oh, yeah. Wait, Let's... was that in actuality? Was somebody in the trees just shouting, hey, play a song? <laughs> yep, so if you're, hey, yo, if you're playing attention, it sounds like voices are coming from like the tops of the trees yelling out, and you don't see anything whatsoever. Damn. Not from the range that we're at, or? Nope, you don't. Just the lack of light? You don't, you don't see anything. You definitely really, in real roleplay, heard the voices, and it sounded kind of like three different ones, and they all came from different high-up areas. All right. All right, let's hear the song, Bard. Here's the song. All right, so I'm beating on my drum. I'm not going to simulate beating on the drum because I have nothing to beat on. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> this is one of my favorites, for it is about me. My name is Boson, also known as Triple B. My looks, my heart are contradictory. A fey lord placed a curse upon me. My knowledge lies in drums and history. I was cursed to sing as practice makes perfect. I've been singing a while, as you can suspect it. You, you hear in the trees as you're going, woo, woo. 
Oh, thank you. Let me freaking continue. <laughs> I'm skilled in magic, also gifted in the drum. But look at me wrong. I will be bedded with your mom. <laughs> like, I can't continue anymore, please. Uh, so as as you're uh, as you're singing and whatnot, two gold pieces just come flying out of a tree far off and, sm and smack you in the head, and you hear woo, and then you you, you hear nothing. Thanks, Luca. And the forest just returns to the beautiful sounds of the crackling fire and the and the night birds. What the actual me. fuck was that? <laughs> I need to stop. Uh, chat keeps giving me disadvantage. That's my second disadvantage now. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to use disadvantage twice in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, after Triple B does his little song, I'm going to and I have like a little flask. I'm gonna unscrew it. Pull the water out and then water hand clap. I love the water hand clap. Yes. Just as much water stuff as possible. Much water. <laughs> uh, so, yes, as you are still sitting here, you can't help but to wonder what the, what the villagers were so worried about. You can hear the birds. Uh, you don't see too many critters besides, you know, small ones here and there, but, uh, the air smells sweet and, you know, there's light sprinkles through the canopy as the sun is setting, and, I mean, you're having a great night. Um, you, you have, uh, another little bit to talk amongst yourselves before, you know, everyone feels like they have to go to bed or start their first watch. Um... Am I able to cast find traps in the meantime? See if there's anything around us that could jump out or cause any problems, you know? Of course you can do that. Yes. All right, I'm going to cast that. And then it says within the line of sight, is there like an immediate path? that we're like following or are we just kind of going off of so. um i'll just i'll just say um based on everything um because you're you're casting the actual spell right yes yeah you just absolutely do not sense or feel any traps whatsoever like you're pretty at peace it's just a nice peaceful campsite you have going here for the first night all right um i'm gonna be weirded out about the fact that random people for yeah. some reason <laughs> calling upon me for a song so i'm gonna ritual cast detect magic okay to see if that was something funky or just like it was just straight up yeah, so um, the great thing about Detect Magic is all it does is detect magic. So yeah. you, uh, you definitely feel like the, this forest is very, very magical. Um, I don't think, based on the spell, you would really know much else, but it's kind of like your spidey sense is, like, exploding. It's, yeah, it's very tingly. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. literally, I'm in the magic. <laughs> yeah, yep, basically. If you were watching the tops of the trees, would we be able to see any movement after they talk and then leave? Um, let's say that you were doing that and rolling a perception check. Okay. Twenty. Oh. Hey. Yeah, you noticed something, but it was so minuscule that it might not make sense to you. you. You find yourself, you know, while the fire's going, thinking whatever it was had to have been pretty small, and you're kind of like racking your brain and thinking, how could something small get up that high and how could it be yelling? But it was just like the most subtle of things, like a branch like dipping or some, flea some leaves dropping in an area, things like that. So you're kind of dumbfounded at the moment, but you do feel like 
you could see that a presence might have been there and you weren't really hallucinating the voices or something. Well, congratulations, you made it so Jonah's not sleeping tonight. Um, <laughs> just has her own flask and mothers that was fucking weird. Um. And for a little bit of description, she does have, uh, like in her artwork, she does have that big discolored scar that's across her face. And that eye is actually like whited out, like it's blind. Nice. All what right. happened um, to as... your eye? She just just out with it. <laughs> I mean, you got a face. <laughs> Explain it. You've got a face. Explain it. <laughs> you got a face. <laughs> it's the greatest statement I've ever heard while playing D and D. Wait, we have we have the quotes set up. Did we set up quotes with the bot? I don't remember. Well, you guys can you answer him, Joan, while I look at this in the background. If you want to. <laughs> yeah, if you want to answer him. She. Hold on, I glanced over at Twitch and it the quality was super low, so now it's bothering me and I had to fix it. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she just kind of responds very curtly and says, it was a bad fight. I lost. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Insight. Well. It sucks to suck. <laughs> is that, that's, <laughs> that's your full response? I don't know what else to say. All she right. explained the face, so that's okay with me. Uh, well, it's uh, it's starting it's to get stares at you. <laughs> you have a face. Excuse me. <laughs> if we ever come up with come out with like T-shirts, that should be one of them. Like you have a face, explain it. Yeah. Um, I think I can add. Uh, the quote. It might be only certain pr permissions. Yeah. So then do I do, hey. do, there we do go. a quote? Yeah. <laughs> and then the first one was a test, I think. If it'll give us the first one. But there you go. You have a face. Explain it. Um, <laughs> at this time, the uh, sun is down and you start to uh, prepare your um, watch and going to sleep and whatnot. Um, and let's see here. All right. Yep. Hey there. Hey there, Martyr. The uh, that's a third is it? Oh, that's advantage, I guess. Yep. So you <laughs> I get, get a, two disadvantages and one advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can remove one of the disadvantages, or you can do them in order. I'll let you decide. I'll do it in order. All right, look at that. Um, yeah, this is the first test quote. Yep. So, you make it through the first night um, seemingly well, um, and you're ready for day two. Here we go. Alright, let's go. Yes, we pack up and start traveling again? Yep. Yeah. Should be said, Caleb has made a delicious breakfast in the coals of the, uh, of the fire from the previous night. Uh, and he has been awake for many hours when you guys are when you guys wake up. Uh, did not sleep, so I guess maybe if you want help, you can have that. I would appreciate it. That'd be, that'd be very kind. Yes. Alright, you guys, after breakfast and everything make your way a little deeper into the forest you're walking along and uh what is everyone's passive perception real quick 16. i'd love to tell you also who has the lowest wisdom my passive perception is a 14 my wisdom is a plus 14. one okay my wisdom 17 so plus three Okay. Uh, fifteen. Oh, it's pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty wise people. Um, I guess. 
I guess that'd be me with one. <laughs> yeah. Who who would you who would you who would you guys say is kind of like leading the party and deciding, you know, which way you're going through the forest and whatnot? Um, as you might remember, you just went into the forests. You didn't get a map or directions or anything, so you're kind of just going off of your own wits. I'd say I'm the still druid. Marking trees. But yes, valid, valid choice. Okay, valid choice. All right, to the druid, can you roll me a survival check, real quick? Yes, I can. That's going to be a twenty unnatural. All right, great. Yeah, you're you're in your element. Like this forest is great. Loving the birds singing. Uh, the sun isn't beating down on you too hard. There's plenty of water puddles and little streams and stuff, so you're you're navigating it quite well. Um, however, um, I need all of you to roll a d20 real quick, uh, besides the druid. So the other okay. three, roll me just a base d20 real quick. Here comes the disadvantage roll. Oh yeah, I got disadvantage. On this one. Uh, PG gave advantage to me and Nerdy. Okay. Yep. You guys can use your advantage. That would be nine. Okay. Just tell me who gets the lowest. With yeah. advantage, I got a seven. <laughs> All right. And Joan. Oh shit! Does that mean I roll again? I forgot. Uh, did you roll once or twice? I rolled once. The okay. original was a 15, and okay. then the second one was a 3. Yep, so it looks like uh, Caleb rolled the lowest, correct? At a 7, that is correct. All right. So as you guys are walking along on the second day, um, you notice Caleb starts to kind of wander off a little bit, um, not kind of staying in the line that you guys have normally been staying. And... Uh, Caleb, you are starting to follow a little a little light, and it's caught your attention very greatly. Um, it's beautiful, and uh, looks like something that you would love Holy, to get your hands this on. This is the dankest dungeon. And uh, it's leading you kind of off the path, and you're and you really want to follow it right now. Do we, we notice this? Yeah. yeah. Do we notice it? Um. Yes, you all have pretty decent passive perception, so for the moment, you would notice it indeed. Hail Xander, that's a glorious light. I, oh, uh, why, why don't we continue this way? Uh, do, we see, do we see what he's seeing? Yeah, so if you guys notice him and you start to move in his same direction, um, you also notice these just beautiful little bouncing lights seeming to lead you somewhere very special. Uh, because we don't know where that's going. And so I'll have to say that as she steps up and kind of grabs the back of... He's wearing that robe, right? Yes. Um, he grabs the robe and just holds him in place. <laughs> like, don't fucking follow that. <laughs> so for it does have a hood, like a monk hood would. So you're just holding on to that, I assume. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. So EG just donated five dollars for a bad table. I'm yeah, gonna. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna say that I already know what's gonna happen because of the nature of this part. I'm gonna do a di a kind of different type thing. Um, okay. so one, two, three, four. I see what you're doing. Uh, you're doing. wow, Caleb again. Caleb is just like super focused on this thing and starts running after it and just like breaks free from you guys and he's chasing this ball of light. <laughs> oh, shit. And I cast wall of water in front of where he's running. Uh, okay, maybe like stop I, him. I assume that you can. Uh, yeah, I have a range of sixty feet on it. Yeah. Okay. What he has to make a save, right? Uh, let me make sure. Uh, it just says that the 
Oh, yeah. Each five foot. Heck, 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 heck. I've never used this spell before. I'm sorry. Uh, 10 feet high walls. It says the wall of space is difficult terrain. So. Okay. So, something that's kind of cool about this is it says you can create a ringed wall up to 20 feet. I would say in, okay. in this case, that's probably what you would do. Kind yeah, of, I, I guess, was trying to get him to stop yeah. running off. Like, can you can you All not? Right. All right, yeah, smart move. You quickly, you know, do whatever kind of flourish you do, and a, a column of water shoots up around Caleb. Um, it is 20 feet in diameter, 20 feet high, and one <laughs> foot thick. Uh, yep. Caleb... Uh, I will give you a roll. Oh, what do we want to do here? Uh, a constitution saving throw. Um, hey. Real quick here. Good thing you're good at those. Start. Does that mean you're just running smack into the water? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like belly flop. Just... Okay. I rolled um, a 22. All right, yeah, so you do not run straight into the wall. You kind of, it kind of breaks you out of whatever this haze is you were in, chasing the light uh, for a moment. You still want to get to it, but you don't want to get to it bad enough that you run through a a wall of spell. Um, So you're, you're in this column of water with your thoughts, just thinking, I really, really need to get to that. And that's where you're at right now. Okay. How far from me do you think he is? Probably just about 20 feet by now. He broke out in a run. I'm sure he didn't get too far before she reacted. Can I cast Suggestion on him? Uh, you have to see him, correct? I guess that's that's a debate of whether you can see through the water or not. I have dark vision. (laughs) So well, my eyes are good. Yeah, I mean, you can see through water. It only, yeah, distorts. It doesn't. I, I'd say yeah. Sure, go ahead. I would see a messed up version of him. Yeah. Okay, so he needs to make a wisdom saving throw, I believe. No, nope, yeah, wisdom saving throw. Give me one sec. I rolled a 14. Okay, so 14 was the save. Does he make that then? Uh, I, be- so. I believe the rule is meet or beat. So that's what we'll go with in this case. Other people might have different rules, but he Thanks. almost, almost starts listening to you. But man, that shiny five do- I mean, that shiny thing is just, he wants it so bad. So, I mean, Caleb, you're still in the column. You as won't... much as this is problematic for the party, because this is what you've said, I am dead set in doing. Um, Caleb, uh, can do you think that players can see through the wall of water? It's distorted, but yeah, I think they can at least, you know, make out your, your body um, um, outline and colors and things like okay. that. Okay. So uh, from, like, say, the top of the, uh, the column of water um, or somewhat through, my body will get hazy and they'll notice a mist kind of appearing around mm-hmm. the, uh, the, the water column. And Caleb will appear seconds later, uh, running 30 feet away you uh, have towards the light. Him? All right. He's running towards the light. So are you guys chasing after him? I I'm have done up. all I can. He's discernibly gonna... not within the water wall anymore. He is, he is going. It was one foot thick, so I, I, missed. You stepped out of the water and kept on running. God, I'm gonna immediately cool. kind of clap, and then the water wall comes down. I'm gonna start running after him. I'm gonna look a little irritated. <laughs> All right. A little, a little irritated. So, walking, uh, damn it. Um, uh, you run that certain amount, and you're chasing the lights, Caleb. And uh, after a little bit, um, they kind of vanish. And I need you all to roll initiative real quick. Yeah. That's uh, not what you like to see. When the lights vanish, Caleb falls to the ground and says, "Xander, no." <laughs> 
it was perfect that it was it was like lights and it was Caleb. It just worked out so great. It, it's I love it when that happens. Uh, now Why I don't I'm really like religious at. figures. <laughs> Would, should I use the disadvantage on an initiative roll, or should I wait for like an attack roll or something? Uh, you can just use them in a roll in a row. So you used one disadvantage. Your, yeah. So do this disadvantage. Do that well. one at disadvantage, and then the one after will be advantage. So. Oh! <laughs> Shit! That one. Plus two. <laughs> Plus two. Plus two. Three. Thank oh. you, Luca, for the net one. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Luca. Okay, so the good news is not very good news, um, but it does help. Um, so by our calculations, he's about 50 movement away, and it is Siren's turn first. Oh, dear. All right. Um... Is he still running? Uh, he's kind In of stopped. shit I said I fell to the ground when the, uh, yeah. the light, light disappeared. You fell? Yes. Alright. I'm going to pass. What am I gonna do? Do, what do we ca- do we see anything? It's like, we're in initiative, but what are we Yeah, attacking? we're in combat. What's going on? Uh, would you like to use your turn to move up and kind of check things out, or you don't see anything yet? Um, I don't see anything. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to run up, and I'm going to try to... While I'm running, I'm going to try and pick up some stones, because I have a cantrip for magic stones. And I'm going to have them, like, kind of in my pocket as I'm running up, like, what the hell's going on kind of thing. And uh, when I complete my movement speed, yeah, 30 feet, I'm going to stop and look around, try to see what's going on here. All right, great. So, yes, right at the end of your turn, uh, you you make it, uh, how close? You make it, you're about 20 feet away from Caleb, so, yeah, you see this. Um, okay. You see in front of you the forest start to moan and creak, and you see a giant mound of forest just start moving and just like, <laughs> and you see like tentacles fly up in the air, oh, and you see cute. just this huge shambling monster that's made of like vines and plants and on its back you see a a shocked face stuck in its body like just dead but like not Uh. fully not fully decomposed yet but like pure pure shock in the face and uh it starts to come towards caleb and its teeth are made out of like these wooden like barky looking teeth um, and it's about uh, another 30 feet away from Caleb. From Caleb? Okay. Yep. And on its turn, it's going to start <laughs> walking towards Caleb. Um, Might one call such a hideous creature a uh, mound? It, it would be something you might call a shambling mound, possibly. Ah, okay. <laughs> If I were to conjure an image in my head, that's the word I would, <laughs> I would associate. Okay, just making you sure. Yep. Uh, All right. You, uh, it is actively trying to reach out to Caleb um, with its vine, viney tendrils, um, and it looks like it really wants to eat you. But that is the end of its turn. Okay. So then, as far as initiative order goes, it's Siren, the Mound, then me, uh, and then yep, and then Caleb, yep, Caleb, so, and then Martyr. Okay, yeah. sorry. Just go, so I can make sure ahead, I get the sorry. order right. Yep. Uh. So. Hi. Sorry, I'm double checking some movement thing. I don't have anything that I had, but yeah, um, 
I'm literally just realizing I had dark vision, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she is going to move forward. And base movement is just 30 feet, right? Depends on who you are, but that's pretty, pretty common. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mine's 30 feet, but, um, yeah. So moving forward and I guess taking an action to draw my weapon essentially and get ready. She's, at this point now she has eyes on this thing. So that's, I'm flavoring this as she is drawing the weapon as she is running, but because of movement, I won't be able to do any attacks or anything. So. Okay. Yep. Yep. You're, you're still a little far away. Basically, Siren has ran up, is about 20 feet away from Caleb. You've run up, you're about 20 feet away from Caleb. Um, the monster is now only 10 feet away from Caleb. And next, it is Caleb's turn. Uh, hey, look. Let's see what I can do. Um, in, in your turn, and what you see is a very large a large plant to be exact. Large. Um, large. You're feeling you're feeling pretty pretty scared. Um. Well. Um. Uh, Caleb is gonna look up angrily, uh, and take his action to stand up fully, and um, in a. Uh, uncommon uh, fit of rage, uh, he will um, say, how dare you trick me into thinking that you were Xander? And uh, he is going to cast, um, I guess this is called uh, Ganazar's Scorcher, uh, which feels appropriate for a giant vine monster. Um, a, a line of roaring flame, 30 feet long and five feet wide, emanates from oh, you in the sure. direction you choose. Uh, each creature in the line, which I'm basically at the front right now, so I assume no one's in front of me. Nope. Um, needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Alrighty. Oh, dexterity. Which again, I think a shambling mound of some sort of creature uh, may not have the best dexterity, but we're gonna find out. Uh, yes, uh, it rolled a three. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. We love exciting. to see it. Let's see how much damage they take. Dang it. Uh, they take six damage. All right. Um, surprisingly, to your shock... Uh, no one's shock. The fire attempts to kind of engulf and burn through all of the matted mess uh, but maybe it's just a little too wet maybe it's just too thick it doesn't seem like it's catching fire or sinking too deep Xander zits uh, and if that is the end of your turn I believe that would be Bozin's turn alright um so, how far away is it from me? You are, um, you should be 50 feet away from Caleb. Yeah, and it's 10 feet away from him, right? Yep. So it's 60 feet. Yep. Okay, I know Matt. I'm gonna do vicious mockery on it. Oh! Needs to make a wisdom check. All right. Oh my gosh! I rolled a four twice in a row, so it hey, it, it, it that, has a it has a four. That is Critical a four. Fail. That is a fail. All right. So would now, you like to tell us how you mock this creature? <clears throat> I get out my drum. I start beating it. Boom, boom. Your face is ugly. You look <laughs> like mold and fungus. I don't like you and that weird face that is like super shock freaks me out. And <laughs> Uh, oh my god! Four damage, 
and has disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn. All right. And I will use my bonus action to give some bardic inspiration to Siren. Hey! I see you, the one with water! I believe in you, have one D8 for the future. Hell yeah! All right, I'll get that ready. So you just add a D8 to any ability check, attack roll, or saving throw in the next 10 minutes. All right, sounds good. All right, so, and yeah, if that's the end of your turn, it's top of the round, Siren's turn. Let's go! I'm going to run up about... How many feet away is Caleb from me at this point? So I believe you moved 30, so he should be 20 away by now. All right, I'm going to run up 20, like up beside him. And uh, actually, I'm going to go 25, put myself in front of him. And I'm going to cast Tidal Wave. So that's going to be... Uh, 30 feet in front of me, 10 feet wide, 10 feet tall. That's going to be a dexterity saving throw from this All creature. Right, I don't even know what it's called. As you, uh, as you let that loose and, uh, the creature sees that you're trying to stand up against it, uh, the general feeling of the woods and the situation change a little bit um oh no you don't quite hear the birds anymore and, oh no uh, <laughs> that fucking title though <laughs> all right so uh does a 19 hit a 19 does uh wasn't it didn't it need to do a dexterity saving throw oh yeah that's true uh well, so it rolled, a, it rolled a 10 so all right, well, I needed a 14, so that's going to be... Uh, I'm not even looking at the right spell. Good job, me. Uh, 4d8 bludgeoning damage. So I'll just do 2d8. <laughs> it's going to be 8 plus 5. I have to do some math real quick. 8 plus 5. Uh, huh, huh, huh. That's gonna be 22 points of damage. Hey, there you go. What type of damage is it? Bludgeoning? Uh, I, be I believe it is bludgeoning. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And is knocked prone. Alright. Uh, it is knocked prone? That is quite surprising. You just knock this large monster prone but it's its turn uh so that part doesn't, oh boy. doesn't matter too much it does mean however that it can only get to caleb but it does shamble forward and uh it is going to uh use a slam attack uh on you and i would assume that you are a medium or smaller target caleb as much as I tried not to in character creation, he is a medium character. <laughs> All right, so... A whole lot of fresh aqua. <laughs> He's going to take yeah. the two just big hulking arms with, like, tentacles at the end and just slam onto you with a 15 to hit. Ooh. Are wow. you squishy? Is that a disadvantage? Um, but actually. Oh, yeah. It has disadvantage on its attacks. Oh! So let me roll that again. Yes, that is with disadvantage. So does a 15 hit? <laughs> um, can I ask, if I were to cast shield as a reaction, would it count as this attack or for only next attack? Uh, it would, it would react to this attack, but it does have another attack. That's yeah, fine. That will, will not be... So, as a reaction, I assume before I get hit, um, I could cast um, Shield, which raises my AC to 15. 
which means the first one would knock it. All right, it's going to try to attempt the same thing again, and it still has disadvantage. Uh, that'll be a 17 to hit. <laughs> well, I guess that one hits then. All right. Um, this thing's a disadvantage, don't know her. You got those fours out of the way quick. <laughs> Uh, it is going to do, well, low, low damage. It's going to do seven bludgeoning damage. Um, but I need you to, uh, contest a grapple as these arms smash down on you. The vines and f fleshy planty arms try to wrap around you. So roll me a strength check. Uh, do you want athletics or just... Well, I guess they're both exactly the same. Um, yeah, one of one of my home... It, I guess it's a home rule, is I allow you to interchange athletics or acrobatics as long as you'll describe me... Like, if you're not supposed to use acrobatics, if you tell me an acrobatic way that you're doing it, I'll allow it because it makes sense to me. That makes sense. Um, however, I did get a natural 20 with a plus two, so 22. All right, yeah, that nat 20, you basically backflip after getting hit and jump out of harm's way. Uh, you got the feeling that it would grapple you and then try to eat you, so you feel very good that you didn't let that happen. And it is now Joan's turn. I'm reconsidering my vegetarianism says Caleb. <laughs> so now its arms are like on the ground? Uh, yeah, it, it, they're, it... they're kind of wavering, you know, mid-medium creature range at about where Caleb's hips used to be. <laughs> used to be? That's so ominous sounding. <laughs> so it's within like 20 feet? Uh, yeah, it's uh, right on Caleb, so... Uh, I believe a lot of you ended 20 feet away from Caleb, or if you're ahead or around Caleb, then yeah, it's right around you as well. Okay, then move, since I ready last turn, I have my sword drawn, so I am going to take not one, but two slashes at it, because I can do that. And that is a... A D10. Wait a minute here. Yep, just don't forget to yep. roll the hit. Yeah, I was... It shows two different things for my sword, so I was trying to figure out which one it was. But, uh, what is my hit? It is a plus five. Oop, there's one. So the first one hits. <clears throat> okay. So that is D ten plus two. Nice. And then going for a another The idea is to like slash both of its arms off essentially, but its arms I don't know how are, well that's gonna go. <laughs> yep, its arms are very nice targets to be slashing at. All that's right. the second hit. Yep, that'll hit. Not as much damage, but... All right, you're just hacking and slashing and plant materials kind of flying everywhere. It's kind of like you've just begun hacking into a, a big old tree for the first time. So, you know, you're making the first little notches, but you're doing, you're doing okay. I would like to note, I'm also putting myself between it and Kate. All right, great. Uh, if that is the end of your turn, it would be Caleb's turn. Caleb is going to shout to his team and say, this thing is taking barely any damage. Is it really worth trying to fight this, or should we move on? This is... Mm, sorry. Mm. Something <laughs> happened to my voice for a second. Uh, this you is broke your probably curse. the creature that is fucking up the forest. We must kill it. 
I guess you're right. And so uh, he is going Pray to... your god! Maybe... <laughs> Um, he is going to try, uh, since you know fire doesn't work, he's going to try chill touch on this thing, and we'll see how that goes. All right. That's an 11. An 11 to hit does not hit. Yeah. Even with plus seven to hit, it still didn't work. <laughs> Sorry, I'm meta. Anyway, um, so he tries chill touch and it just kind of shoots off into the distance. Alright, is that the end of your turn? Unfortunately, yes. Alright, it will be <laughs> Bozen's turn. Bozen! Um. Bozen has spells that would fuck up the rest of the party if they were near it, so he is not going to use them. Instead, he is going to do what he did the previous time in hopes that it helps still. And I am going. I can't. Diana, you're freaking dancing in this. But I made I made the fight yeah. music too good. I just want. I know like... it's really good. Uh, it's a jam. <laughs> I am gonna go with another vicious vicious mockery on it. So make me a wisdom saving throw. All right, that was a nat twenty. Oh, Nothing yeah. happened. You almost hear the trees and vines laughing at you taunting you back. It almost seems like the face on the back of the creature mouths, you're gonna die. <laughs> I do not like that one bit. And that is the end of my turn. <laughs> Alright, if that is the end of your turn, it is back to the top of the round to Siren. Let's go! Alright, uh, so... I'm going to. Is this thing any closer to me? Like, did it move during it? Uh, you turn? you moved up to help Caleb, so you're you're right up with it. All right. Um, I'm going to use the stones that I had picked up, and I'm going to use whatever the hell it's called, magic stone. Very good. Uh, and I'm going... Stone. Actually, no, that's a ranged attack. I can't do that. Uh, I'm going to get up closer to it and try and hit it with my mace. All right. So that's going to be a, an attack roll. That's going to be... Uh, does a 14 hit? A 14 does not hit. Ah! Sorry, then I did not succeed. Alright, is that the end of your turn? Um. After it doesn't hit, I'm going to backtrack it a little bit and go back uh, next to Caleb. Alright. Like, yeah, I'll just say that you're not really moving out of its range, you're just kind of shifting you know, around it a little bit, so yeah. we won't we won't do an opportunity attack. But it is its turn and it now has taken notice in you. Um I believe it is no longer at disadvantage since it broke that last one. Um and it's going to try to slam Siren. Uh does a twenty-three hit. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right. So you are going to take... Oh, no. You are going to take uh, 19 bludgeoning damage, and I need Jesus. you... I need you to uh, try to escape its grapple. So athletics right. or acrobatics, whichever you're better in. Uh, athletics. All right. Uh, does, uh, 16 help me? It does, it does. You, you do not get grappled. You are lucky. However, it is going to now turn a little towards Caleb and try to do the same thing to Caleb. 
does a nat 20 plus 7 hit? Oh, God. You did. I'm sorry, uh, Caleb. Okay. It's I okay. Mean, I mean, it's not okay, but it's okay. So I switched dice. I'm sorry for switching dice. Interpose isn't a thing in this, is there? What did you say? Interpose isn't a thing here, is it? No. All right. Well, you got lucky because it rolled really low, even on the crit. It's 18 bludgeoning damage, <clears throat> and I need ah, you. Ah, yes. I need you to contest the grapple. Of course. One second, please. Nineteen. All right. As you break free of its arms, trying to wrap around you, you guys hear all familiar voices from uh, the trees. Run, you idiots! That thing is huge. <laughs> and it is now Joan's turn. <laughs> uh, who's turn? Voices. Oh, Joan's Humble turn. voices. <laughs> this is run, you fool. <laughs> Are they back up in the trees? If only I had said something earlier. <laughs> yes, they are in the trees. Do we see them at this point now that it's daytime? Nope. Damn. But uh, uh, if all of you want to roll a perception check real quick for me. I am fine with doing that. I would love to. That's going to be a 16 for me. Sorry, one perception check you said? <laughs> hey, there you go. Ow. 16, all right, 21, okay. Yeah, you guys are definitely coming to your wits. And while this monster is probably something in the forest that has been getting travelers, uh, it's definitely not the thing that they would have hired you to, uh, deal with unless they wanted you dead. Um, and That's specifically, Joan, you're looking at it and seeing what you guys have done so far, and you guys, like, haven't really made a dent. This is, like, some mythical, like, forest monster that's probably left better in the forest for now. With that, I will let you guys decide what you want to decide on your turn. I assume I'm next, right? Uh, it is so... Joan's turn still, technically. Oh, Joan's turn, right. The, yeah, the perception was just... No, you're right. To see if... Uh, to gauge what we were fucking doing, essentially. Um... So I think what I'll do is... Can you do like ready to attacks or prepared attacks? Yeah. And set something up? Yeah, okay. so you just need to decide what you're going to do and let me know what triggers it. So essentially, she's going to. Again, keeping herself. Put herself between it and the rest of the party and look at them and say, start moving back. I'll follow. <laughs> Hi, I'm gonna be a tank. Fucking back off. <laughs> All right. What uh, are, you, are you just gonna attack it if it starts moving uh, towards you guys? Yes. If it starts moving towards one of them, I'm going to either block for them, if I can do that, or attack it to okay. try to keep it from doing that. Okay. Cool. That's fair enough. Caleb, what are you doing? Um, I'm getting the fuck out of dodge and um, disengaging <laughs> and just kind of running back towards the, the, the trees that we came from. All right, great. And Bozen? Um, so I'm, I'm far away from it. I didn't move closer to it. Do you think that I would have the knowledge that this thing could be charmed? Uh, I mean, anything can be charmed. It's whether or not you feel like you're powerful enough to charm this creature. Hmm. I am very tempted. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna stay back uh, to where I'm ready to leave with the others. And... I want to use suggestion on it. All right. What is that throw? Uh, you need to succeed a 14. Uh, wisdom? Wisdom, 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 yeah. 14 wisdom. It actually fails. Wow. Okay. So, I can, with a limited, eh, limited amount of words, I can basically kind of tell it what to do, as long as I am not making it hurt itself, I believe, is how it goes. Okay, yeah, so what are you asking it to do? I am going to ask it the, to leave us alone, because we are not, like, really all that tasty, <laughs> and that it wants to go off to a far-off land and seek out people named the Harpers. <laughs> all right. <laughs> It, I mean, you suggested it for at least however long and whatever range your suggestion lasts for. Uh, you start to see it slowly tar start to turn around and slowly head in the opposite direction. Um, it is slow, but it is going. Um, and that would be Siren's turn next, and you guys are out of initiative. So you can all just basically run, unless anyone's sticking around. I isn't I'm... just not attacking it because it'll break my hold. Alright, then I'm gonna start booking it. We have oh, eight wait. hours. <laughs> <laughs> we have eight hours. <laughs> we have eight hours to book it. Alright, as you all start running away, uh, things calm down a little bit. Uh, you make it back to the path that Siren was leading you on from before. You might feel a little tired, um, but you're still, you know, midway through day two. As I did mention, though, the general feeling of the forest has changed, and you might not feel as safe and at home as you once did. Um, on that note, this is a great moment to take a break. Back. Hello, everybody. If you're just now tuning in, our party is deep in the forest after meeting face to face with a big old mound of fleshy plant mass. Uh, that was a little, a little more than they wanted to handle at this moment. Uh, one of the voices that jumps from tree to tree probably gave them a little help in that regard. <laughs> if only someone had said it sooner. <laughs> if only. But nobody if did, only, so... If only the forest um, one of the hill. I really just want to fly up and see who this is. <laughs> <laughs> As I said before we got back, the overall feeling of the forest has kind of changed. You, you get back on the path, you know, you wipe yourself down a little bit, but you have another half a day to travel. Uh, the trees start to get thicker, and uh, the light is kind of getting choked out a little bit by them. Um, you make your way on a winding path. And, uh, oh, I gotta grab all of you at once like usual. You make it all the way to the next night, though. <clears throat> and uh, as is usual it uh becomes a good time to set up camp and start a fire you're a little more on edge um are you guys keeping the same watch uh schedule yeah yes but caleb uh, will not go to bed so early he's as you said a little on edge all right. Uh, I will be going to bed early so that I don't have to play another song. One is actually going to suggest maybe they do intervals of with two people doing watch. I could do intervals. And she's fine with doing intervals. All right. Just so that we can make sure sense. this whole light situation doesn't happen again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <Caleb. laughs> the buddy system. Honestly, we need to just like wrap everyone in a rope. Like around the waist, <laughs> it's like the buddy system. Oh, do you get rope? 
Oh, I got rope. Mm. Let's do it. You got I'll an adventurous kit. You have rope. <laughs> All right, so we're doing intervals. I'm fine with that. All Let's right, do I'll do first watch then. All right, so as the sun is setting, um, you guys are getting your rope out, getting your fire ready, whatever <laughs> it is you're doing. <clears throat> And uh, in one of the trees somewhere right above you, you hear, why, hello there. What it is, what is it we have here? It's a different voice. It is a very different voice, yes. You can tell by the voice that Cole chose for this. <laughs> I just want to clarify. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. I'll, I'll change the voice on next one, but... I'm still recovering from my water. Is the, is the party still, like, up and we're just, like, getting ready to go to bed, or is this during my watch? It's, everyone's still up. You haven't gone to bed yet, but oh, you shit. you hear from the trees, Hello, everybody. What are we doing here? Is it higher up, or is it closer to the ground? It's not as high as the voices you've been hearing, but it is up in a tree. And uh, if everyone wants to not do anything. Never mind. Yep. You can't really make out where they're at yet. <clears throat> I live well met stranger. Um, do you care to show yourself in the, the glorious light of the fire? I will show myself in due time. I rather like it up here. It feels much safer away from people who I don't know yet. That's ominous. My name is Dalen. Who be you and why are you here? Well, pleasure to meet you, Tom. Um, <laughs> Dalen. Dalen. Tom. Well, I tried to make a joke there, and that didn't work, because I no. couldn't hear any of Cole's uh, enunciations, evidently. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we are simply adventurers from the nearby town of Unpronounceable um, to just see what's been going on in this here forest. Um, I've been told that under Xander's glorious earth, there has uh, been some, well, disp uh, disappearances and such. Oh, yes, yes. So you are adventurers seeking to solve the riddle of the forest. It's a riddle, oh dear God. Oh. <laughs> Is there anything you know that would be able to help us while we try to figure out this riddle of the forest? Well, I'm still, still deciding about you and your party. Who are you? What are your names? I got this. I kind of jump to my feet. Press hesitation, or press, you know the. You got it. You got it. Shower of sparks. It is I, the great. Bugbear bar named Bozen Triple B, that is me. Boom, boom. As he introduces himself, I do the Triple B again with the water, and then... <clears throat> well, it's nice to meet you, but I would suggest keeping your voice down in the forest. Have you not run into any unsavory creatures yet? Nope. Not even one. Well, you will. Cole well, looks over at Bose and he's like, "You kidding?" <laughs> Cannot take him seriously at all. <laughs> and the rest of you. I will save my voice for the hymnals, but uh, my name is Caleb, and um, I come from a town far away from here. <laughs> these I'm are my, oh, oh, sorry. These no, are my traveling companions, uh, uh, Siren and Joan. And as he introduces me, I'm going to Siren, the way it's spelled out, S-E-R-R-E-N, in common. And I'm going to give it a wave. I have a question about your character, just for clarification. Mm -hmm. Has she yeah. not actively spoke at all? Is she just communicating through the water? She does speak, but not that much. She, if it's like a simple phrase that, or like it doesn't require that much communication, then she'll just make it with the word. Mm -hmm. uh, she does 
talk, <laughs> just not too much. I just wanted to make sure. I didn't even think about that. Good eye. It or... seemed like she was maybe mute because of how she was communicating at first, so I wanted to see. Hmm. Nah. She does. It's the way her people back home communicate, but they don't use too many words. Okay. All so. right. While uh, you guys are introducing yourselves, <clears throat> oh, all right. Well, I believe I can trust you. And uh, you see uh, above you come hopping down from like limb to limb, very effortlessly, like swinging, jumping getting lower and lower, a <clears throat> human male um, that has reddish-brown hair. Uh, oh, we got a ginger. Pretty, pretty rugged-looking, has some recently healed scars, and uh, you see in front of you as he drops down to the ground, you see Daylin. And uh, hey. Daylin says... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. D D D I'm says, fine. You it's a pleasure dying. to meet you all. I haven't spoken for a while. I feel like I have cobwebs on my on my vocal cords. Been out here a while myself. I had a partner once upon a time. <laughs> <gasps> you... It's starting to sound like the ranger from the story. That's exactly what I was thinking. A ranger from a story, you say? Yes. From the nobleman in the at Quervar? That was called. Mm. Telling you tall tales to... about me, I'm sure. You wouldn't happen to know yeah. an individual named Torsten, do you? Uh, of course, I know that bastard. Knows nothing but gold and jewelry. Uh. So he sent you out here too. And I came of my own accord to s seek an end to whatever is causing these troubles here. Ditto. Have you come any closer to solving the riddle of the forest, as you say? <clears throat> well, I'm sure I know a lot more than was given to you. What did they tell you? That people are gone missing and in the forest and that's about it? Animals and misfortune and people and the such. Mm, yeah. Well, you see, all of the problems started about three weeks ago. Uh, this was about the time I lost my partner. Uh, we were set upon by a group of beasts. And they, um, they severely wounded him. I don't know what happened to Jin, but now it's just me. What kind of beasts? Uh, From what we were told, you left him. No, we weren't damaged. There's, um, these weird dog-type creatures that attacked oh. us. They have skin of shadows. They're very... I don't know, they don't seem to belong here. I've been trying to find out where the beasts live in the forest, but I actively feel like this forest is working against me. Would I have an idea of exactly what he's talking about, where his creature was? <clears throat> you can Given... roll a history check. I would love to roll a history check. That would be a... <laughs> Anybody roll one? A 16. Okay. Um, you've heard of what he might be talking about, but you're not sure what exactly it is. You know, there's things like blink dogs, there's, you know, um, displacer beasts, um, there are, I mean, shoot, maybe even owl bears. Panthers, yeah, I mean, so many, and so many different kinds of animals. All the ones except for the one that I know you're not saying. <laughs> Can any of us roll a history check about it? Uh, yeah, yeah, or... of course. Right, I'm okay. curious on how that would go. Oh, that is not the correct dice. 
Let's try this again. I'm not doing much better than you. Uh, it's gonna be a 19. Uh, so a 19 and a 17. Uh, working together, um, kind of just looking back and forth, being like, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. Uh, the two of you think that he might be talking about displacer beasts. Is Caleb going to join us in this? I've said in the fiction that I've been <laughs> far away, so. <laughs> if you want to tell um, me this, I would mean... love to join in. But that doesn't mean you can't roll a history check, okay? I Aren't you a sorcerer? Being, you would know I about hate things. being so meta. <laughs> You're a sorcerer. You know things. Fine. Um, as you guys are arguing about what beast it might be. Happy. <laughs> happy. I got an eight. There you it go. fits the fiction. Well, you, ate a, you ate a low roll, so. Yeah. Daylin uh, is looks at you guys and he's like, "It's not really important. Uh, it's gonna, it's done and gone. I haven't seen those beasts for a while. We should set up camp. I can sleep in a tree. I don't need to put you out, but I'm more than willing to group up with you and see this out together, strength and numbers and and all that." As he kind of like scratches his. S scruffy uh, red beard and as you see his hand kind of touch across his face it's you can tell it's really weathered and his hands are weathered he has some like healing scars things like that you know just man in the forest type stuff <clears throat> can I insight check him make sure he's not like plotting to kill us in our sleep or anything mm -hmm. <laughs> alright I appreciate you for thinking of that. <laughs> I have a plus six, so let's I'm gonna see. have my faith in you. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a twenty-five. Wow. Um, yeah, no, you you trust him. He seems to talk the talk and walk the walk. He's all about figuring out um what's going on here. Seems as though he didn't even take any reward or ask for any help or anything. He just set off with his one partner. <clears throat> um, he's kind of just been living in the forest and you can tell um, by looking at him and his demeanor and everything, he hasn't talked to anyone for a little bit. All right. So T out of Tell game, me, Dalen. Go ahead, go ahead first. Tell me, Dalen, um, you <clears throat> were not amongst the um, the beings in the treetops trying to save us from the shambling mound we definitely did not just run into? Um, no, I've been in this tree for, I think, about a day. And he points up. And if you strain your eyes ever so much as the sun sets, you can see, like, the smallest semblance of him laying down, like, a piece of cloth where he probably sleeps up in the tree. Well, Xander's light may bless this tree, but uh, we did run into other creatures chittering away in the forest. Do you have any, um, um, any run-ins with them? Oh, those little bastards. Yeah. Or bastards, got it. Good, yeah. good, good. <laughs> I, 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 they're, they're essentially harmless, but um, yeah, they like to poke fun. They, they paid me, so, I mean, they're What bad. are they? Um, I've just been kind of referring you? to them as the forest's pranksters here and there. I've never really been able to see one up close myself. So is Fae just a common term that can be used for something like that? Around here, yeah. So probably some kind of Fae. Would I know that they're Fae? <laughs> um, I, I would say you can make a good guess based on the character you built if you yeah. have experience with the fae if you're from this area you've probably heard stories you don't know what they are um, but you're in a forest full of magic you know, 
could be could be a, a you know a couple different things. Right on. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, out of game. Yes, this is a picture of Dexter. I googled. <laughs> I googled <laughs> the description of the character from the one shot, and it was one of the first images. And I was like, "Yes, this is so perfect. I'm using it." I usually use <laughs> art for the characters in the games, but this was too perfect. So, yeah, it caught me off guard quite a bit. I mean, it's a dude living in a forest. <laughs> it's just a dude. That's... <laughs> oh shit! Hmm. After you guys. You know, exchange pleasantries and uh, continue getting ready. Dalen jumps back up into the trees and uh, starts to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> while everyone else is setting up, can I be collecting more wildflowers? I want to make little crowns for everyone. Aww. Of course you can make little crowns for everybody. Yeah! Is everyone Post. allowed to pick their own crown color? Uh, sure. Why the hell not? Well, what colors do you see? <laughs> Whatever color yeah, what? you want, the forest floor will provide. Hey! I'm gonna do blue for, her, for my character. Because, you know... This is fashion souls. You have to have good fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta fit the aesthetic. Gotta be All right. So. Uh, what what colors does everyone want? Maroon, if they have something similar to that. Maroon. Maroon. All I right. To crash with my outfit. <laughs> the color of Xander is about uh, a goldish yellow. All right. Uh, I guess we'll go with blue as well. Yep. All right. You and then will find those all aesthetic. pretty easily. All right. What about Dalen? Just yeah, what keeping about Dalen? an eye. He's, he's up in the tree snoring, but you have a feeling that he would like a plaid flower crown. Plaid? Yes. <laughs> 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 Hey, yo, Mother Nature, can I get some plaid flowers? If, oh. if anyone watches this and has never watched Dexter, they're so lost. They are. Jesus Christ. Uh, but yeah, you make the flower crowns. You guys do your shifts. You make it through night two um, without, without you know, anything going bump in the night or whatnot. So um, a long rest then? I'm gonna, I'm gonna yep. hand out these little crowns right. at uh, breakfast. Whatever we end up doing for that. So yep. I'm gonna wait until everyone wakes up. Um, yeah, so everyone, you start waking up. Um, what does everyone kind of do for their morning routine? Like, what are you drinking? What are you normally eating? What, what kind of person, what kind of morning person is your character? Vocal warm-ups. Yeah. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned the previous night, he wakes up rather early, um, well before sunrise, and does plenty of um, fire and candle-based, light-based um, religious prayers before um, going about his day. He is, unlike his player, um, very awake in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna be hanging upside down from a low tree branch that supports my weight, and I'm just gonna be playing around with the water, making shapes and stuff. I I kind of look spaced out because I'm not on watch at the moment, as everyone's kind of getting up. All right. So anyone who is wearing shoes, when you uh, wake up and start to take steps forward. Your laces have all been tied together, and you trip. What? And if I'm wearing metal boots? If you're wearing metal boots, then you're not affected by this. Um, but those who wears of you... metal boots? That sounds so that's entirely in armor. <laughs> uh, what if your character doesn't wear shoes? If your character doesn't wear shoes, you're not affected by it. But anyone not wearing shoes, for some reason, you really wanted a crisp drink of water this morning. 
Uh, so you started drinking some water. Siren loves water, right? You always wake up each morning with a tall glass of water. I am a tall glass of water. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, so hey. actually, here's how it happens. Caleb, your shoes are tied together. You stand up, trip, fall over. Um, si yes. Siren, you drink a glass of water or flask or whatever, and uh -huh. it's actually turned into alcohol. Uh, oh. Bozen, Bozen and Joan, you... Does Bozen has facial hair, right? Uh, yes. yes Bozen, yes. your facial hair is now on Joan. Oh no! <laughs> so I need uh, I need Caleb to roll a <laughs> dexterity check, a uh, sleight of hand, to break the boot bindings, and I need Siren to do a Constitution saving throw real quick. Do it. It looks very ah. good on you. I rolled a four. All right, you both fail. So Caleb is what? over there struggling to untie his boots, and Siren is now intoxicated after just what? gulping down a bunch of alcohol water. <laughs> um, so until until you guys break free from it, Caleb, uh, you uh, suffer reduced movement speed until mended. And Siren, you have disadvantage on ability checks until you are sober. <laughs> How does sobriety work in in your, um, in your you'll, campaign? You'll 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 get a chance to save again, um, and All again, right. and the more you fail, the longer you stay drunk. Um, All right. So I'm gonna be like chugging it, hanging from the tree, not <laughs> even realizing there's anything different until it's like empty, and I'm like. Oh, I was gonna drop the flask and just kind of be hanging there, swinging back and forth a little bit. Like, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> That's not not a woo girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bozen, Bozen, you're feeling your face, and it's very lacking of a beard. But Joan has a very nice beard now. Too smooth. How the fuck do I get this shit off me? But it looks so good! Uh, as you guys are kind of like rumbling and you know, falling around and swearing, Dalen jumps down from the tree and he, he kind of tries to hold his laughter. He's like, oh, those, ba those bastards. <laughs> He's like, oh, I told you, with them tricksters, damn pranksters. Those <laughs> Those fey, whatever they are, they got they got you guys good. It's going so, to take me forever to grow this back. So we see that he's struggling with the boots, and she's just fucking drunk off her ass. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> so we're still saying that um, this monster in the woods is the troublesome one, and not the sprites of disrepair. Um, well, <clears throat> these tricksters, they don't mean no harm. They're just crass, you know, love a good laugh, do a little pranks here and there. They're, they're not making anyone disappear or, or never come home or stealing livestock. Well, I hope that they're not being attacked by this thing because I'm not feeling very generous to help them out. <laughs> All right, so I will give Siren and Caleb uh, another check real quick. So, Caleb, it was a sleight of hand. <clears throat> Siren, it was a constitution saving throw. Natural okay. 20. All right, Caleb, you're fine. Uh, Siren, you roll at disadvantage. Uh, that's going to be an 18. At disadvantage. Oh, with disadvantage? Yeah. Yeah. Can you jump? That's gonna be a nine. All right, Siren is still drunk, but Caleb has managed to fumble out of his shoelaces being tied. So, I mean, it's about time where you guys are gonna set off. So, however you decide to deal with a drunk party member. 
Take her sweated off. Let's <laughs> fucking drag her with us. <laughs> just tie me up with the rope. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. She was no, why, why don't you just like like tie like strap me up to uh, Triple B's back or something? Have him like lug me around. Oh yeah. Hey, that's not sweating it off, okay? <laughs> the bard definitely wants to carry you around. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And despite knowing this does literally nothing, um, uh, Caleb is going to take a cup of water from, let's say, his own particular. Um, well, he's going to check that his water is not alcohol first, is it? <laughs> it is. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> is there a stream or a pond or something he can grab water from? Yes, just fine. Uh, he's going to dump out his flask. Um, you wasted just... booze. Uh, I'll drink it. <laughs> I do not need... I do not... I do not need sustenance to fill me. I have the Lord, um, the Lord Xander, to help me with that. Um, he takes new water and uses precipitation to make it into coffee, and gives it to, um, and then also uses precipitation to, uh, let's just say, warm up the cup, and um, what's it called? And gives it to uh, Siren. This won't do much, but it'll help a little bit. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab it, kind of like, like I'll, I'll, I'll like kind of miss it for a second. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna grab it. I always start drinking it, and I'm. Eh. I don't like how it tastes, but I'm just gonna keep drinking it. It anyways. is technically <laughs> just water that tastes like coffee, <laughs> so I'm just really getting water in them. Nice. All right. <clears throat> Understandable. You guys. I don't like the taste of it. Start dragging her along, trying to sober her up, um, and you travel along for for a little bit, and uh, you see in front of you uh, the first clearing you've seen in a while, um, and so aptly the words "bridge" appear right in front of Whoa. your face. Um, not really, but you get the picture. <laughs> um, and you're in a, you're in this little part here where you're kind of at the edge of the trees. Uh, you're sipping on your coffee-flavored water. Uh, go ahead and because of the coffee-flavored water, roll a, another uh, Constitution saving throw. This time, just normal. All right. That's going to be a 15. All right. You feel yourself starting to sober up. You no longer hey. have a disadvantage on your checks. Right, Thank God. Right as you come out of it, you start to hear voices. And for a second, you might think, am I still drunk? Am I hearing voices? Oh, no. But uh, all of you hear them off in the distance. And you hear... <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm just going to say you guys hear it. Uh, do, 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 do. You hear someone arguing? I said I already don't want to tussle with them. They're so teensy and we're so big. What can they do to us? We don't have the wherewithal to take them on direct like that. And your jabbering makes it unlikely that I'll be able to trick them into giving up the secret of where it went. I just didn't know why they took it from us. It was a trifling little thing, but they can't have a use for it. They did it as a jest on us. Those types didn't care about not but teasing and playing at the expense of others. Uh... <laughs> what? That is what you hear um, for the moment. Can I cast, as I hear people talking, I'm going to cast Cast Without a Trace on all of us. Well, it's on me, but uh, for the duration, each creature you choose. Okay, yeah, so uh, the entire group of us has uh, plus 10 to stealth check. Alright. <clears throat> Great, because I have to roll at disadvantage for that. <laughs> Is, uh... Hey, just hope you don't... 
Actually, I'm not gonna jinx it. All right, is everyone moving forward stealthily? Yes. Yes. We. And yes, that is plus ten. I've been drawn, but yes. All right, go ahead and roll your stealth. Daylin is very okay. stealthy, as you knew before. So is it just a flat plus ten, or is it plus plus ten plus our original? Plus ten on whatever your total is, I believe. Okay, so, and then I roll twice because of disadvantage. If it's not that, that's what we'll go with for now. Uh, it doesn't specify, it just says plus ten to dexterity slash stealth check. Yeah. So. It would be an addition to the modifier then. Yep. All you right. guys you guys are fine. You feel sneaky as heck. Daylin's right oh. behind you. Um, you start to push forward and you see a, a little more as I grab the wrong tool. Um, <laughs> you see a bridge in front of you. Um, let me move you guys. Um, as you make it out into the clearing, uh, you see now in front of you before they notice you, uh, this right here. Ah! Um, I don't want to. So they're, they're, they're still kind of arguing, uh, with themselves. They seem to be arguing about someone taking something from them, and they want to get it back. Uh, you see a path before you with a long and fragile-looking rope bridge, uh, and you see a filth-crusted being arguing with itself with its two grotesque heads atop of its shoulders. Um, Lovely. Hey, Cole, how yes. long is this uh, bridge that we're looking at? Can we tell? Um, it's, it's a rather sh short bridge, um, but as you kind of sneak up a little closer, uh, you distinctly see the ravine is about 150 feet across, and the drop is about 100 feet down, um, as Cute. you're kind of, like, sneaking around while these two argue. Great. I'm gonna look at the group. And knowing that they're arguing about something like being taken from them, they want it back kind of thing, I'll be like, should we try to barter? Like, hey, we can get this thing back. Or how do you guys want to go about this? Uh, I don't yeah. want to make promises if we don't know what it is. Uh, That's true. I mean, I can talk to him. Oh. Uh, can I, can I assist? So I go up to him and kind of add on to it with my little water show? <laughs> yeah, you can go, you can walk <laughs> up to them and talk to them, yeah. Alright, so, without revealing where, which direction I came from to reveal the rest of the party that's still stealthy, uh, I would like to just walk up to him and just, like, lay right into it, I guess. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna persist into But the, the freaking cantrip that has the Presti Presties, and I'm gonna do the sparks again. <laughs> Big sparks! I <laughs> am the bugbear bard bosun! Triple B is me. How may I, I assist thee? Okay. <laughs> How may I assist thee? Nice, good. Uh, they kind of jump back a little bit and raise their arms with their weapons for a second. And they say, Oh, you gave us a fright. Oh, little bear. You want to help us? Yes, that is what I want to do, as, yeah. And, and why would you want to help us? Uh, because you are uh, beautiful people, just like myself, that have clear sense of fashion. <laughs> oh, well, yes. 
Uh, we are singing back to you. <laughs> the best we can. We do need your help. Uh, a voice booms. Yeah, we need help. Our toothpick was taken. Our toothpick slash toe scraper. And we were taking a little snooze. And someone stole it. And we need it back. And uh, the other one says, I think it was those dang, uh, <clears throat> those dang uh, pranksters, those fake tricksters. Uh, <laughs> what is so special about this toothpick? It lets us pick our teeth and toes so easily. What is it made of? What does it look like? Maybe I can help you find it, I might. Oh, it's long and shiny and pointy and just so great for getting out things in your teeth. Uh, I have this small knife if you would like to use it instead. Oh, no, that is, that is not big enough. I have this long sword that you can have. Because fetch quests are boring. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just offering to give up your longsword? My longsword in exchange for like, yeah, friendship. <laughs> just, just to give it to us. It, to us. <laughs> it is much when better I'm gonna, all. Yeah, there's... when he's like trying to barter, I'm gonna cast uh, Misty Step up here from behind Triple B. And that's when I'm going to kind of whip out my uh, staff. I have a, I have a staff. Uh, yeah, wooden staff. And I'll kind of like hold it up like, eh, maybe this thing is probably about like almost six feet tall. And it, I could shave it to shave down one end so it's like kind of tapered, you know, like a little pick. But I just kind of hold it up. What, what exactly are you showing them? Uh, wooden staff. Mm. Trying to make a wooden staff into a toothpick? No. Yeah. Ours is shiny. We need shiny. And it has a very nice handle, unlike that one, but I don't know. You make a good deal. We will give you cross across the bridge for the, as you said, long sword toothpick. Yes, uh, that is such great news, and I'm glad I could help you both. So they'll they'll kind of take it from you, and they'll kind of whisper a little bit. Oh, what an idiot! This one is way nicer than our toothpick. And uh, her, uh, <laughs> the other one's like, Yeah, I do. And they go start picking their teeth with it, and kind of walk aside so that you can go across the bridge. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of like pat, pat him on the, I don't know how tall he is, uh, like shoulder, arm, whatever I can reach. Kind of like, they're there. It's all good. I'm just gonna like throw a fake rope to the rest of the party. Did you even use it? <laughs> Let us go. Let us go. Alright, yeah, you guys uh, gave them something they wanted and they let you across the bridge you make it across just fine you might have a couple moments where you hold your breath a little bit gets a little scary but you make it across to the other side uh Daylin's like oh my gosh guys can't believe that actually worked for you i can't even either <laughs> what have you interacted with them before yeah, they usually ask for a ton of meat. That's really hard to get. <laughs> Guess we just got lucky then. Luck! It is um, my- Oh shit, I just hit my fucking bed. <laughs> yep, Sorry. so you make it across the bridge. Um, on the other side of the bridge, um... I need you guys to roll a perception check real quick. Not my strong point. Actual story. 
Oh, nice. All right. Natural 20. Yeah. The two, hey! the two people, you, you guys don't have to roll if you already rolled. Say, does it even matter? Yeah. So the, the I two... got a very exciting 12, everyone. <laughs> so I'm not bothering. Uh, Siren and Bozen are walking along right after the, the end of the bridge. Oh, sorry, stream. Let me give you a, a better a better view. Um, and you guys trip on a rock, a very, very mossy rock. And you actually uh, hear a bunch of voices yell out, yell out from the rock, Hey! 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 Why are you stepping on us? Uh, who's stepping on them first? You guys both just like walked at the same time and for some reason tripped over this very mossy boulder right in front of you. Oh, uh oh, my apologies. <laughs> you're apologizing to the up. moss. Yeah, for, for a moment, you're just kind of like, I apologize, not really <laughs> knowing what you're apologizing to. But, <laughs> but then as you uh, look closer, um, you see a minuscule metropolis unfold in front of you. There's busy little flecks of light in, in frenetic motion in front of you now, and you focus your eyes on what you just kicked, and you see bright, bright spots of color are actually tiny humanoids careening to and fro. Um, a lot of them aren't too concerned with you. They're kind of just going back and forth in this little, little village. Um, but then you see a tiny blur of fuchsia dart towards you. And uh, in front of your two faces, uh, you see a pixie. And the pixie addresses you and is like, Why, Ayata, you big people always kicking around our rocks. What are you doing here? Uh, I think this calls for some song. <laughs> All right, so... I'm breaking out the drum. Boom. <laughs> we are five adventurers strong. We came into this woods to see what was wrong. Um, I'm surprised I came up with a rhyme. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, uh, they actually all start clapping. Um, they are great fans of entertainment. And a couple, a couple of them that were going back and forth and whatnot kind of stop a little bit and are getting uh, attention to you. And uh, after you finish your song, they all kind of look towards Siren, waiting for her entertainment. Oh, shit. Um, I'm going to kind of sit, stand there for a second. And then uh, I'm going to make uh, my own little water pixie out of uh the water and i was kind of like they they clap again and uh they're very pleased and like can <laughs> the the one in that flew up to you is like can you please not kick us again next time though we appreciate the entertainment but we don't appreciate kicking our home my sorry about that serious apologies what are you guys doing out here anyways? Uh, <laughs> I'm fucking singing out the song, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, take over from here, um, Bozen. Um, we're looking for, well, something that's causing a bit of trouble in the woods for the, the neighbors across the bridge. Oh, there. I know what you're talking about. That horrible thing over there snoring. Nobody can sleep. Are you here to stop it from snoring? Uh, potentially. If it's causing more than just um, auditory issues. Well, you can't be sleeping with that beast rumbling snoring all the time. We stole its it's silver thingy, because we got tired of it snoring. So, what? Oh, God. Talking about, about the troll. Yeah. Uh, 
How about this? We'll let you guys pass if you play a little game. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. Can we throw in fixing whatever shit your friends did to us? Oh. The, just can, motioning to the fucking beard. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can fix that. And, and they kind of, like, zip around and, you know, pixie oh, dust, nice. pixie yeah. dust or whatever. And uh, everything kind of goes back to normal. Your shoes are tied better than before. Your beard goes back to where it's supposed to be. And uh, <laughs> the pixie in front of you is, uh, first you must agree to three conditions. Do you agree? Uh, what are the conditions? You have to agree before you know. No, we have to no we're never... not doing that. Oh, shit. Tell us what the conditions are. Please. Well, you did give us quite the entertainment. How about this? Hmm. Tell us, tell us a good joke, and we'll let you go. Oh shit. Ah. Uh... Um. Where, where do bugs go when they are hurt? Where? To the hospital. <laughs> Why was that so terrible? <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. That's like the only joke I retained in my brain. How is that even a joke? I don't know. It's a wasp. At all. Either way, they they love it and they clap, and then they're like, "Okay, okay." What about, can you stop that thing from snoring so much? You're talking about the two-headed thing across the bridge, correct? Yeah, that thing. I'm sorry, I froze for a second. I couldn't hear you. What'd you say? Yeah, that thing. That thing? Yeah, I'm very good friends with that thing over there. Uh... Yeah. What did you steal from them, though? Some toothpick? shiny thing that, yeah, they call yeah. it a toothpick, I guess. May I hold it for a second? Yeah, you can go give it back, just as long as you make him stop snoring. Okay, sweet. Yeah, they so... they, they hand it back to you, and it's, uh, it's a vicious short sword um, that they've kind of been holding on to. And it's pretty, pretty gross, as you could imagine. Uh, so, and Etin uh, cleaning its teeth with it. Yeah, it's got all that, like, their plaque and stuff all over it. Ah! Um, sweet. Right. Are you gonna go check in on the... Are you gonna go run back across and see if you can solve the snoring of the Etin? Oh, shit, I guess. I'll do that real quick. <clears throat> All right. It'll be fast. Um, we got we're friends. Okay, Bozin and whoever else wants to try okay. to solve it can run across, and uh, just tell me how you think you're going to solve a snoring problem. I am. Since I have an herbalism kit, I want to see if I can make something that would kind of alleviate any snoring problems. Okay, yeah, go ahead and roll me a medicine check. Let's go. <laughs> you create one of those nasal strips? <laughs> yeah! Uh, that's gonna be a 21. Oh, yep. You, you guys, like, do this so fast and efficiently. You, like, so run back across. <laughs> Siren, like, rifles through the medical kit while looking at it, and she is just like, ah, oh, yes, they obviously have sleep apnea. And, uh... <laughs> You you kind of fix up their area. Um, you remove some of the the items that might increase sleep apnea, and uh, you give them a solve to put under their nose when they go to bed at night to decrease snoring. And after that, since you did so well, you run back across. You you tell the, you tell them what you did. Yeah. 
It'd be real tragic when they run out of that self. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I mean, in the in the in the sake of progress, you know, I assume you guys continue on past the pixies. Yes. Isn't yep. there one more thing? No. Nope. There was the joke. There was a. They had three no, conditions. That, it was because we. Uh, the third one was uh, just to do the conditions. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> That's funny. <Yeah. laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Uh, They're pixies. They don't have a very strong legal <laughs> department. Yeah. So you guys continue on. Um, after you go further into uh, the forest. Sorry, I just hiccuped a bunch. You get to nighttime again. Um, as you're traveling past the bridge, um, Almost at the end of one day, uh, you are once again in another beautiful opening of trees. Um, before you, the dense undergrowth and tightly packed trees suddenly give way to a beautiful glade filled with sweet grasses and wildflowers. Um, there's another moment uh, in this area where you start to feel more relaxed and calm. And uh, here you see for the first time in a long time, uh, forest critters grazing and frolicking. Um, and while this is all very remarkable, the main thing that draws your attention is a, a luring human humanoid form in the middle gesturing for you to approach. And in front Jesus. of you all, you will see this. Oh, I see. Oh, pretty lady. Oh, we know who's gay. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very pretty looks like lady a looking a humanoid. I like her. Woo! All right. Maybe it did. And uh, she's just kind of gesturing for you guys to enter further. Um, and give me one second. Don't be suspicious. I'm suspicious. <laughs> I will move you into this area. Um, in this nice, open, beautiful glade. Um, the music is great. I will put... Oh, I think I got a... Okay. Yep. And there we go. Still in front of you is the... Pretty lady, as Siren said. Pretty lady. I am the hideous one we saw in the tavern. Beginning to think that uh, the townspeople are full of shit. <laughs> that I'm, is there a, a camera of perception or something to kind of gauge? Because we know this is distinctly different from the rest of everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, what are you trying to perceive? I'm... Well, one, we can also ask Dalen. I'm gonna ask Dalen if he's encountered this person before, or if there's something that he knows about this area, first off. Uh, Dalen kind of looks around. He's like, oh, I haven't made it this far yet. This is news to me. And he kind of looks towards um, what's in front of you, and he says... Uh, hello, and uh, as Dalen addresses her, a voice, yes, it, it, it's safe here. Please, please come forward. Is that an insight? <laughs> I want an insight. <laughs> um, yeah, you can go ahead and roll insight. My terrible insight. My terrible insight got me an 18. An 18? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you're just trying to see if there's any danger or anything, right? Yeah, essentially. It's like, is this actually safe or is this a trap? Yep. Uh, once again, uh, you feel feel pretty safe. Um, at the same time as you're studying uh, this person and or creature, they're kind of studying you as well and assessing. Um, and as you're, you're kind of exchanging looks, um, they look at you and uh, 
they're very, very nice, very cordial. Um, and as a show of their, their goodwill and seeing that and knowing you guys have not been, you know, carving a war path through the forest, you helped Hargle Vargle, uh, you played some games with the pixies, you even helped the snoring and returned the toothpick all at the same time. You are all, as this starts to talk to you, uh, going to gain, uh, oh shit, all right. Uh, you're going to gain 13 temporary uh, hit points. Oh, dope. And, uh... Wait, did hit points not reset with that long rest? They should have. I'm looking at the stream, um, and and it's... Yeah, the the extension on stream doesn't update very well. You have to refresh to actually update it. Yeah. So, as it is, like, on top of of regular HP. Yep, so temporary temporary hit points go above regular HP. Um, you said that was 15? Uh, 13. 13. Yep. So as this is happening, um, sh- like, just warmth washes over you as she kind of gestures towards you, and you feel uh, ever stronger. Yes. I I'm going to walk up to her. I know, <laughs> I know why you're here as well. You're here to lay waste to the creature, are you not? Is it a creature? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I'm whatever sorry. is whatever's plaguing the forest and the townspeople outside of it, yeah. Oh yes, I I came here. I I heard Jin's dying wish to the Earth Mother, and I came to answer his call. Unfortunately, that ravenous monster had already grown too powerful to be cold. I tried to contain it as much as I can, but. I'm afraid its presence has drawn many beasts into the forest. And while while I am capable myself, I'm definitely not strong enough to dispatch something as great as a hydra all on my own. Oh, fuck! I'll just go over here for a second. <laughs> I am, however, willing to help you and and share with you what I know and see to it together that um, this creature is taken care of. Unless I have misjudged misjudged you and you are here for different reasons. Uh, yeah. I'm here no, to deal this, with whatever's going on. This beast will not live to see another one of Xander's glorious dawns. Well, I'm not really familiar with Sander myself, but I take that as a, an agreement. Yes, oh, we I just made a deal. So. <laughs> and uh, as Siren gets closer to her, she looks at her and she's like, well, you look to be one with nature as well. Very lovely thing like yourself. And how Hello, can I You're kind of you? cutting out. I can't hear you that well. Ah, it's hard to do quiet voices because of filters. <clears throat> She looks at you and she says, And who might you be? You look to be one with the elements and nature yourself. Quite a alluring creature as well. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Guess we know who's gay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm Siren. Uh, I am a druid of the coast. And, uh, yeah, uh, all right. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, so she, she kind of just moves her attention to everybody, and, uh, she starts sharing with you a bunch of information. The monster has been responsible for all the disappearances of wildlife from the forest, um, whatever forest animals it has not been able to lure, I have redirected out of this place for their safety. Um, the Fae have been t- 
turning back the citizens of Quarvar for their own protection as much as possible. And un unfortunately, Jin's body that I came to seek has been consumed. But his undigestible effects are in the creature's filth. Uh, I, I suggest we possibly get some rest here together in the safety of my glade. And um, I can share more tomorrow and we can set off to hopefully rid it of this place. I'm wrong insight. I look, trust I am not. <laughs> I am not trusting of people. Okay. I don't want to wake up dead. Oh, I'm having, I'm I am not trusting right of people, and I'm wasting high rolls on this. <laughs> what did you roll? A twenty. Yep. Every everything she has said, it, you don't see any reason for her to lie, um, and just her presence and the the health and whatnot she gave you is is very warm and soothing. Alright, then I don't see any reason why we can't make camp here. I, I, I will hopefully be a great host to you. I, I don't really know what your kind consumes, but I have very many natural um, flowers and other things that you can snack on. Uh, 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 um, can 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 you do things about curses from Fey Lords, so to speak? Eek. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Are, are you? Do you see yourself under a curse? Uh, that I do. I am bosun, by the way. Triple B. <laughs> and what? What? curse are you under? Well, madam, I am under a singing curse. And who put this curse on you? Uh, fuck if I know I didn't <laughs> write that in my story. Oh, I know it was a fey lord. Um, well. Can you at least alter it to where I don't have to sing in a deep voice? Well, I'm I'm not at my fullest potential with that creature around, but I, it might be something that I can take care of once it's rid of this area and I have full access to my powers. Thank God. And uh, at this point, you notice uh, after she's continued talking more, um, her and Dalen are kind of like not really warm to each other. They've kind of realized um, who who they are. And um, she she looks over at Dalen and she says, Dalen, why did you leave Jin to die? Ooh. Knew that, knew that. <laughs> Ooh. And uh, Dalen looks and he just, Puts his head down and he says, I did my best. I'm so sorry I didn't know you came here to, for Jin. I'm, I just, I should have, it should have been me. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I will never live this down. I can't, <clears throat> I can't get, I just, and he just like starts, you know, tearing up a little bit and he just kind of turns his, his back to it. Um, and uh, saunters kind of over to a corner, a corner uh, in the glade, and, and and lays down for a little bit. Finish him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then she kind of looks at the rest of you, and you know, a smile comes back across her face, and she says, "I do hope you'll find." My accommodations fitting. I will see you in the morning. Yep. All right. You and darn it. I am. You guys have uh, a little bit of time to prepare, and then you can do your watch again. Okay. So I am actually going to go over to Dalen. People can do their other things if they want to, but I would like to talk to him at 
before we call it a night. All right, so you you walk over to him and he kind of <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, she'll just kind of sit down and then hand him her flask and says, "Sometimes there's just nothing that you can't do." He he, he kind of sits up and takes a drink. He's like, well, it should have been me. I could have, I could have done more, and I, I'll never live this down. No. At this point, all you can do is live in his name. Try to uphold his memory. I, I appreciate you coming in and saying that. It, it means a lot. Yeah, well, we can just say that we have some common ground in that regard. Oh, have, have you lost someone as well? The last squad that I worked with, some other knights, I wasn't able to protect them, that's how I got the scar. Oh. Does it ever get easier? No. <laughs> it always... Is it, it real? It will always weigh heavy. All you can do is try to keep yourself from making the same mistakes. Understand. That's what I figured. All right. Well, tomorrow I have a chance to redeem myself and help you slay that creature. And at that moment, he kind of thanks you again and uh, saunters kind of over to his own little area and like bundles up some patches of grass and whatnot for a pillow and lays down and starts to go to sleep. Yep. Then she'll step away and just kind of do her own routine for the night, which is mostly just... I think she she would have just let him keep the flask if he was holding on to it, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> he, he needs it more than I do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just kind of comes back to. Would they have set up a fire in this area? Yeah, yeah, you can set up a fire. Um, is anyone doing anything else uh, special before they go to sleep, and or start watch? No. I gotta risk my party singing voice for the next day. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you guys do your regular nighttime uh, routine before laying down to go to sleep. As promised, everything is super safe here. Um, you might, you know, wake up to some lovely birds singing, see see a little furry creature hop along through the glade, um, but you make it through the night safely. As uh, you all start getting ready, and uh, you are getting prepared, the Al Said. I think it's the Al Sayad uh, walks over to to you guys and um, shares some more information as uh, she's getting ready to come with you as well. Um, well, as you some of you may or may not know, this beast has many heads, and um, cutting off one head unfortunately will only grant temporary reprieve as more might grow back in its place. And um, I do know that it does not like fire whatsoever, but I am, I am ready and willing when you are. It's a good thing we have a water druid for fire. 
fucking worse than weakness. <laughs> That's me! I'm just kidding. I don't have fire either. Do you know how well it deals with radiant? Um, what about banishing the creature somehow? <laughs> um, I don't know the answer to either of those questions, unfortunately. Then we'll see what happens, I guess. Okay. I take that as everyone is ready. Ready when you all are. Okay. So everyone gears up. Um, she's coming with. Um, Balin's coming with. Uh, she starts to lead you towards uh, some trees that kind of uh, looked impenetrable at first, um, but she kind of helps them open a little further and uh, you see off in the distance a lovely mire um, as you step out of the trees and um, we are going to change maps for a second Ooh, um, a new map. Ooh. as we previously said um, <laughs> you don't have control of your tokens um, but I'm just going to plop you down there real quick. And uh, this is mainly just so you can see kind of where you guys start in reference to where the Hydra is, um, as I need to zoom out for stream. Um, so this will kind of help you give somewhat of an idea. But um, don't worry about moving and strategic you know, standing on the grid. Um, yep. We'll just do theater, theater of the mind for that part. So, as you make your way through the trees, um, you see the hydra about a uh, hundred feet away. Eh, it's almost, it's, it's almost pretty accurate. So, the ruler will give you a decent idea. Um, some there are some toppled trees and stuff in the general area that uh, you see right away um, and then there is the water and you you see you see the beast um, and everyone go ahead and roll initiative as you step out into the clearing and you see it a hundred feet off oh dang I will roll initiative, but I need a break for a second. Yep, no worries. Unnatural 20. Nice. Oh, hey, we got a third initiative. Two natural 20s? Jesus Christ. I, I didn't get a natural oh, 20. Oh, that's the wrong dice roll again. I got a five. Yay. Here we go. Oh, boy. I have a 10 back. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. Yep, no worries, I gotta put together the fight uh, here in a second. So, Hydra. Alright. Triple B really making a storm here with the drum. Alright, so. I'm kidding. Who had the highest total? Was that Siren? Uh, mine was not a natural 20, so. Yeah, unless. Property. You had 20 has... plus what? Oh, you just had 20 total? Yeah, because my initiative is plus two and I rolled an 18. Okay. Uh, no one got over 20, right? Nope. All right. So, what is your base dexterity, Caleb? Zero? Zero. Okay, so Siren, Aww. Caleb. Um, Keep it real. Wow, a lot of people rolled pretty bad. Alrighty, your party members seem decently uh, ready for this. Um, the Faye Al, Al Sayed. Um, And Dalen, uh, 
Dalen's kind of uh, pretty scared. Uh, so he's kind of hesitating a little bit. He's not jumping to action as much as everyone else. Um, I think I got... But even still with that, the bugbear is last. Yep. Hey, save the best for last. Okay. Um, so, 100 feet away is the Hydra Siren. It is your turn first. Alright. Uh, you know, there's... Oh, I'm just kidding. I have to stop. I'm going to run forward 30 feet and cast Moonbeam. Alright. So that's gonna be a five foot radius, a, a cylinder, 40 foot high. And I'm going to, let me see that. Yeah, that's, that's definitely within range. Then I'm going to just target it straight for the uh, Hydra. All right, go ahead. That's going to, Oh wait, that's a uh <clears throat> No, yeah, no, I have to roll for attack. Uh does a do I have an addition spirit? No, does a sixteen hit. Um Oh crap. <laughs> How is a PDF smudged? <laughs> like my PDF is smudged. I, I can't I can't tell if that's one thing or another. Uh, oh wait, do do, uh, do evocations? Is that how you say it? Uh, need a attack roll or? Uh, what you did moonbeam? Yeah. Um, so it does hit, but let's take a look. It should say it. You would have a plus uh, plus to hit if it would have if it does. Oh no! Oh, it's so a con. It it's a con save for me. Okay, uh, so that's gonna be a fourteen. Okay, so let's see. I need to roll the con save for the Hydra, and then if it fails, you'll take. Oh yeah, it fails. So go ahead yeah. and roll your 2d10 damage. All right. Nice. Wait, hold up. It says 2d10, but when I when I'm looking at D&D Beyond, it says 3d10. Uh. Um, Is it scaled based off your level? Yeah. Did you cast yeah, it at what? third level or second level? Uh, I casted it at third level. Okay. Yeah. Then it's 3d10. All right. Just make sure you mark off a third level spell slot. That is going to be a... Wait, where are my D10? I have not needed to use a D10 in so long. 3D10. Eight plus six plus three. 17, right? Yeah, uh, 17 radiant damage. Nice. So you guys see a moonbeam strike down from the heavens and smack the Hydra. Um, looks pretty normal, but... All right, anything else on your turn? Um, nothing that would be able to hit it right now. So All right. That, that concludes my turn. That would be Caleb's turn next. Alright, I'm going to do it back. Perfect. I am going to cast a uh, magic missile at level two from where I am, because I don't have to move. Okay. Um and I'm gonna shoot um four bullets at or four missiles at the hydro. <laughs> That's two, three, five, and three damage. So 
13 damage altogether. All right, great. <clears throat> does magic missile have any save or does it just hit? It just hits. There's no okay. attack. That's what I thought. <clears throat> That's what mm -hmm. I thought. I ran out of water, dang it. Gosh darn it. What was the total damage? 13. All right, is that the end of your turn? That will be the end of my turn, yes. All right, it is the nymphs. The nymph, it is her turn. Um, so she is going to... Why did they put that there? Um, let's see, what is she gonna do? I can tell she is going to start running up um, further and I don't have a token for her but she moves up 30 feet um, from back where you guys were which is about right here um, so she is then gonna cast bark skin on herself um, I think that's it. All of her other special fancy abilities, she's not quite in range for yet. Um, you know what? Uh, she's gonna look at Siren and she's gonna cast the bark skin on Siren. Uh, so don't let me forget that Siren now has an AC of 16 um, instead of 15. And unfortunately, that is all the help that she can provide you for the moment. Uh, which would then be Joan's turn. Okay. Let's see, what kind of range does it have? Okay. So. So I have a, f a thing that lets me do two attacks per action. Would I be able to move, do an action, and then attack? Or is it just specifically two attacks? Um, let me take a look. So you can definitely move. Um, I may say. Yes, go ahead. Usually it says if you take the attack action, you may take a second attack. Mm -hmm. Is that what it says? It says attacks per action too. Oh, interesting. I just want to clarify and make oh. sure before I do what so I'm thinking. So are you, are you um, action surging or something different? I was thinking of go ahead, going ahead and proccing Radiant Soul. Um, and moving. Yes. Yeah, so... But I was curious as to whether or not that would let me attack as well, or if it just needs to be moving and Radiant Soul. Uh, just moving in Radiant Soul, as far as I understand, D&D Beyond does kind of list that weird. I don't know why it says that. There are chances to where you can do more than one attack, but I think it's related to action, action surging and things like that. Um, well, action surging is another thing that lets me do an additional attack, but I have a feat that lets me just attack twice per Yeah, so you also have, action. you have two weapon fighting and how two weapon fighting works is when you take the attack action and attack with the light melee weapon, you can use your bonus action to attack with a different light, light melee weapon that you're holding. So... Is that how that works? Yeah, I don't think you can do Radiant Soul and then do another attack as well. Um, okay. But that's how I understand it at least. 
Okay. Then that's fine. I just wanted to clarify whether how that worked. Yeah. So it would just be. I'm gonna go ahead and proc Radiant Soul. Okay. So that and to flavor text that for you guys. Her eyes glow that bright blue that's like in her token picture. And then two spectral wings branch out, but they look like they might be kind of broken, like there's feathers falling out of the wings. As she and she just moves forward to 30 feet. Alright, great. Yeah, the other thing you have is you do have an um, you do have an extra attack, but it's it's as proper said, when you take an attack, you can then use that extra attack. So basically okay. the starting is always making your first attack and then you know whether you use the two weapon fighting or just your extra attack is how it kind of mm -hmm. plays out. So Okay. Cool. Just All wanna make right. sure and that will last for one minute and it means per turn one attack that I make has an additional five radiant damage. Nice. You also sprout, sprout wings and have a fly speed, right? I do. It is 30 feet, hey. so it's basically just a base speed, but I get to fly. Nice. So, you know. Hey, flying's pretty cool in 5e. Like, not a lot of people have that. Like, it's very visual, and I am here for it. <laughs> nice. So that puts me pretty much right about the same place as um, Siren. Yeah, like same area um also uh siren you have uh an ac of 16 now instead of 15 um oh cool all right the the nymph gave you bark skin so hell yeah all right so if that is the end of joan's turn it'll be dalen's turn and he is ready to prove himself worthy, and he's going to run up um, his 30 feet. Um, so he'll basically be almost where I dropped him down. Um, we'll put him right, we'll say he was a little bit ahead of the group, so he's like right here. He is going to pull out his bow and um, he is going to let loose an arrow. He's got a pretty good plus to hit. He's a skilled bowman. Let's see if he Ranger! All right, that was cocked. Oh, sh and I dropped that dice, so it's gone. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, so it does hit, and he is going to do this much damage. I will roll for it. All right, good, good amount of damage coming out of Finn. Um, does he have any other attacks? I don't believe so. Mm. What is the white thing on the map there? That's the Hydra. <laughs> oh, so they um, have. I they're, see. They're I in see the map. The little, it's the top-down version of the Hydra. No So they're on the map, and also they have a token on the map. Gotcha. Can you yeah, they're, move me? they're static on the map. Yes, I can move you. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, up next to Siren. Um, I'm going to. No, sorry. Uh, I was just asking Joan if she was up next to you. Yeah, oh, okay. it's about okay. the same because we were about the same area, so cool. we've been moving about in yep. tandem. He has another attack, and he misses that one. The arrow kind of drops down a little too soon and splashes in the water. Um, and now it is the Hydra's turn. Dun, dun, dun. Right before, Bo right before Bozen. All right. So the Hydra is going to come barreling towards you guys. Um, it's kind of big. It's not super fast or anything. Um, so it's going to make it about still in the water um, to about right here. 
Um, and does it have anything it can do? It uh, does not. You are lucky for now. Um, <laughs> for now. <clears throat> so you do notice that the Hydra is running straight towards Daylin. Um, but that is the end of its turn, and it is Bozin's turn. Woo! All right, so... Let's see, where am I? Oh, I see me now. Yep, <laughs> so you and Caleb just need to move forward. If you want to move your full movement, I'll move you with the rest of the party. Cool. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm a good distance. Um, I am going to cast Shatter at third level. Alrighty. Uh, so he needs to make a constitution save. Shatter is a constitution? Shatter is a constitution. Interesting. I thought it, I thought it was dexterity to get out of the way of it. Um, so it rolled a 16. It makes it. So it will take half as much damage of 48 of thunder damage. Oh, okay. The event or team, uh, or eight, whatever half of 17 is. Half of 17, you said? Yes, half of 17. Okay. Lightning damage. Okay. Yes. All and right. any, any non magical object that was nearby also takes damage as well within 10 feet. <laughs> but I don't think there's anything. <laughs> It's well, good news, we're not close to it yet. <laughs> yep, it's just out there in the middle of nowhere. Um, that is the end of the first round. It is now Siren's turn again. All right. So I'm going to... What one can I do? Oh, you got 10 feet? All right, I'm going to move up. How many feet is that? Uh, 30 feet away from me. So looking, I'm gonna move. Looking at the shoreline, you would be able to tell that the shoreline itself is um, difficult terrain. How? Mm. So it's like re you can tell it's like really mucky, and you, your feet might sink in a little bit. Um, at the at the edge there, just kind of in those edge squares. Damn it. Um, then I'm going to move up about 15 feet. Okay. Cast Frostbite, which is going to be a, another invitation. Yeah. So that's going to be a constitution saving throw. Alrighty. And that's going to be a 14. Uh, it succeeds. Damn it. Uh, alright, that's going to be... On a failed save. Yeah, it doesn't do anything then. Uh, then I'm going to... As a bonus action do magic stone and throw throw a rock at it. Ah uh, yes, Wait. throwing a rock at a giant hydra. <laughs> yeah! Good plan! Good plan! Like, I'm just gonna be like, ah! You know? Uh, that's gonna be... 23. That'll hit. Alright, and then that's gonna be... A 1d6, if I can keep track of my dice. Ah! Alright, we're just gonna go for a different one. That's going to be 6 point of what kind of damage? Uh, right? Bludgeoning? Uh, yeah. Alright. So yeah, you try, you try to catch it with the frostbite. 
Its hide is, is very thick, so it kind of shrugs it off. Uh, but then you pelt it with a pebble, and it hurts it, you know, just, just a tiny little bit. And uh, is that the end of your turn? Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna move back that 15 feet for my 30 feet of okay. movement. Alright. And then after that, it would be Caleb's turn. Okie doke. Caleb is gonna move over this way. Uh, so he's within range of the um, Hydra. And then he is going to uh, cast. I knew the name of this and I forgot what it was. Again, Azar Scorcher at third level. Um, so let's see how that does first. Uh, let me see if there's anything to do. Helpful. Um, burn, the Hydra is burn. going to have to make a dexterity saving throw. There's the dex. Ooh, it rolled low. What's its dex? Alright, it is big and not super fast, so it, it got a 9. Uh, that does not succeed. Uh, it is going to take 21 fire damage. Ooh. Oh! Damn. There you go. As, <laughs> as you smack it with 21 fire damage, it lets out a roar. Um, and you see a head... A head fall dead. Uh, well then. Uh-oh. Uh, Uh-oh. Before you continue, yes. uh, uh, Caleb is going to, well, continue. Um, and he's going to shout, well, you like that then? He's using a sorcery point to cast Firebolt at it. Um, so I'm just making a ranged spell attack. So let's see if that hits. <laughs> uh, Does a 17 hit a Hydra? It does. Perfect. Um, let's see. Uh, it's 2d10. It's going to take uh, 10 fire damage. And I'm going to try to, it doesn't have like force, but like push it away from um, uh, our guide there, Dalen. Right. So like, just kind of like, Shoot, shoot. Come out the side, just kind of push it away. Yeah. So I misspoke earlier. It doesn't lose a head on the first attack, but after the second attack, you do just kind of see one head fall down after it takes a bunch of fire damage. Um, and if that is the end of your turn, it would be um, the Alcyed. Uh, the Alcyed. It will be her turn. Sounds good. All righty. She unfortunately uh, mainly has to move up more to do all her super cool stuff. So she's gonna move up to where she's just out of the way of the um, difficult terrain. And she is going to... She kind of looks at the Hydra and uh, she kind of just starts humming and you see like um, some butterflies come out of beneath her hair and whatnot and land on the Hydra and the Hydra has to make a wisdom saving throw. It failed? No! That is a badass butterfly, holy shit! No! Wait, wait. Why did it fail? Anyways. Um, and the Hydra now seems to be charmed, um, and it does not seem to be threatening towards, um, the nymph now. Uh, that specifically to the nymph party. Okay. Uh, specifically to the nymph. But for you guys, anything, anytime you do something harmful to the target, it will get to repeat its saving throw. Um, but for right now, she's kind of trying to like will it to stop fighting. For the moment, it's only not wanting to fight her. Um, but I mean, it's something. Um, that is the end of her turn. It'll be Joan's turn. 
Okay, so... Move forward. All How right. Would that be? Where would you like to move? I put myself between it and her. Okay. So I'd put it like right there. Okay. Yeah. I think. You can. That would also make it in range. Yeah, you can just barely make it to the edge there. Um. I'm flying, so that terrain oh, is a. <laughs> yeah, if you're, yeah, you have, you have your wings, so yeah, you have no yeah. issue. Yeah. Yep, you're good. But um, I, I can take prepared actions, right? We established that earlier. Um, if you are wanting to, instead of do your turn now and wanting to prepare an action, you can do that. Yes. I would like to prepare an action for if it becomes hostile towards me or somebody else because it's charmed with her, but it's not with me. So I'm gonna give her a chance to be able to make the effect work on other people. Okay. <laughs> um, I, are, you, are you just gonna do unleash like your weapon attacks if it does anything? Yes. Okay. All right, great. We will come back to that. Um, for the meantime, it is Daylin's turn. Um, he is going to kind of step to the side of you guys a little bit, um, and get some more, uh, openness to shoot his bow, and he's gonna do one arrow and hit, two arrow and hit, go Daylin, go Daylin, go. And uh, the first one, as he's just letting loose arrows into the hide, it's gonna do nine damage. And the second one is going to do eight damage. And awesome. That'll be the end of his turn. It is the Hydra's turn now, however. And it is definitely still gonna charge towards Daylin. Um, so I will let you release your actions as it comes across your path and is hostile towards Daylin. Um, Does that mean I also get an attack of opportunity as well, since it's moving out of range? Uh, yes. So go ahead and take three So that's three, three attacks. attacks. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, there we go. So... That's the action economy we would want. Yeah, because you would have done your two attacks first if you wouldn't have held them anyways, so... First one... That'll hit. Alright, so that is with the sword, so it'll be 1d10. Plus two, we'll go ahead and attack the five radiant damage on that. That's not the right roll. But, um, but that'll hit for your second fix attack. It, fix that. Fix that. Right. <laughs> okay, so it's 17 with the radiant damage. Okay. Um, then you said bank that for the second attack. Yeah. So that would be a yep. 21 with a plus 5. Yep, just let, so that. let that one go. 8 damage for that. And the third attack. Uh-oh. Uh, the third attack does not hit. Okay. So I got two attacks off, so, you know. Cool. So, is it 12 and 8 plus 4 and 4 for the Radiant? So, I can only apply it to one of them. Oh, okay. So, we'll go ahead and attack the... So, 16... I guess the most efficient way would to just tack it onto the 8. Alright. That was... So, it's a total of... Close. It's, uh, one of its heads looks like it's about to come down, and it doesn't, it rears its head back up as it keeps charging towards Daylin. It is now the Hydra's turn, and the Hydra is going to, uh, make it to Daylin, and it is, it is going to bite him. You've only destroyed one head, so it has one, Two, three, four, five, six, right? Does that sound right? How many do a Hydra have? Seven? 
This one definitely has seven. I don't know if there's a predetermined number of heads, but this one has seven. Seven. Doesn't it usually start with like five? Uh, I think five is this traditional. Is a, this is a big fat evil guy. He gets seven. Yeah. He's got seven, so he does yeah. have seven. Going by the art. <laughs> well, six, I guess now. Yep, six. So this is very unfortunate to watch. Each and every head is going to lash out to start attacking Daylin. Um, uh oh, he's about to get like. See. Why does it not, honestly, why does it not say how many heads it has? Damn, we should have done a bonus. Uh, well, I'm oh. going off of the art, so. Do it. Oh, it doesn't say on its. As far as I can see. Information page. What art are we talking about? Oh, the Hydra has five heads. Why did they draw the art with more then? So he has four. Uh, the art in the book. Yeah. He can get over five, so that's probably My why. My marmy like joke answer was somehow correct. Yeah. All right, so, oh my dear. That's not a d20. I have to re-roll one of them because it's cocked, so that might be good for him. It wasn't. And what is Daylin's AC? It is 15. Uh... Every single head bites into him as you see him take uh, Let's see <clears throat> How much health do you have, Dylan? Does he have 13 oh, points, no, dude? Oh, no, no, no. He does not. Oh, that's scary. You just get one hit. Dalen is down. Um, oh shit! Is just... he dead or is he in the dying state? He should. He should not be dead. I'm gonna double check my quick math with a calculator just to. Make oh yeah, sure. if it's what double his HP, he's dead. Uh, yeah, he has to go. Uh, his HP under zero, I believe, is the rule. Uh, no, he's not dead, but he is down, and they just tore the crap out of him. Um, and at the end of the Hydra's turn, you see it grow, uh, two new heads in the place of the one that you already killed. Um, How do we deal with this? His character. Uh, actually, dang. That is one small caveat. Unless it has taken fire damage since its last turn, it doesn't regrow the heads. Good job. Oh, it's a fire. Yep, good job, Do Caleb. It. Um, Just keep helping it. All that. right, so that's Bozen's turn. But Dalen is down, bloody, torn mess on the ground. Okay. Um. I would like to see if I can cast Suggestion on it. Alright, go ahead. Uh, Wisdom. Save. Uh, 13. <laughs> Fails! Can this thing be charmed? It, if not, then it has no effect. It actually can. It can be charmed. Okay. So, my suggestion for it is to tie its heads all in a knot like weave each other through so it ties itself in a knot and then lay down on the ground for the next eight hours you know it's really fucking crazy that as it's far as i can tell that works <laughs> yeah <laughs> like suggestion is broken yeah. Uh, I don't think suggestion should be a thing. <laughs> that's pretty... the, the suggestion must be worded in such a manner as to make the course of action sound reasonable. Oh, sound reasonable. So weave us your words. Yes. I'm not the DM. I shouldn't be saying this. 
Mm. Yeah, I was too busy trying but to you read, are so, read you the are whole block. You did say it sounds wrong. Um, let's see. How am I gonna convince itself to not itself? What does emulate mean? Emulate. Not emulate, emulate. Isn't that to catch on oh, fire? Oh, it's killing yourself. Oh. No, it yeah, just says. I can't, I can't have it kill itself. It yeah. can't stab itself, throw it into a spear, emulate, or do some yeah. other obviously harmful act. Yeah. So Though you could find a way to make tying yourself in a knot not harmful. <laughs> All right, let's I hear it. I believe in you. <laughs> All right, I, always um, have. I would like to do it non lethally. Fuck. Um. You obviously can take us out. <laughs> with one attack, maybe you'd like to. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I don't know how to make it tie itself into a knot that's reasonable. Um. Shoot. I can't maybe it's rather it. prideful and really wants to show off. Yeah, it's like I. <laughs> Don't think you possess the capability to <laughs> tie yourself in a knot and impress me. There you go. All right. Don't you say that, and while it cannot tie itself in a knot, its heads start getting really confused as it's overcome by your suggestion, and its heads are like writhing and wrangling around each other furiously, and it is under your suggestion. Um, is that the end of your turn? I will also use my bonus action to spend a bardic inspiration to Siren. So you didn't really hit on your last one, but maybe this one. <laughs> there, there's your you. inspiration. All right, yep, Siren, it is D8. your turn. So what is that inspiration for? You. Hey! All right. Um, I'm going to run for, uh, where am I going? I don't know anymore. Wait, shit. Hold on. Just don't get in my way. Oh, shit. Are you running up to the Hydra? Yeah. I'm going to run up to the Hydra, but I'm going to go 25 feet and I'm going to, I'm going to cast Poison Spray, which is an evocation. So okay. that's going to be a con save, 14. All right. <clears throat> oh my gosh, it rolled a 10. Total. Hey! Total. All right. So that's going to be 2d12 poison damage. What am I going to roll? That is going to be 11 plus 17. All right. And he's no longer under my suggestion. Yes. Yeah. You got you got to kill it anyways, right? Yeah, that's true. Question is, how are we gonna end up killing it if it just keeps regrowing heads? Uh, um, is that the end of your turn, Siren? Uh, and then I'm gonna misty step as a bonus action, thirty feet. Uh, now let's do fifteen feet back. Back just where you came from. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Okay. All right. If, ah, no, don't move, Dalen. You're dead. Ha! Down. Down. <laughs> um. All right. That would be Caleb's turn. Oh, you know, um, since we know, since last time turned out so well, and then move over here, kind of joins uh, Siren, um, and bring out my old school classic. Um, and we're gonna cast some fun spells now. Uh, I'm gonna be casting again Azar's Scorcher again. If you could please make a deck save. I surely can try. Oh. 
Uh, 18. Unfortunately, it does succeed. However, it does still take half damage. Uh, so it's going to take 10 damage. All right. That does put some fire damage on it, though. That is your saving grace. And also, um, because it worked so well <coughs> last time, I'm going to use another sorcery point and again cast Firebolt. Uh, let's see if it hits. Does a 13 hit? Probably not. A 13 does not hit. Well, that's unfortunate, but it's okay. All you win right. some, you lose some. End of your turn? It is the end of my turn, yes. All right, so it's going to be the nymph's turn. Uh, okay. Is she going to do something cool? I think she's going to do something cool. going to do something cool? I like cool things. Um, I like cool things. Um, okay. So let's see. Where was that? Oh. So she is going to, um, at this moment, um, reach her hands out and just, she's like calling for something and you're going to see a swarm of butterflies surround her and then just like kind of seemingly blink, um, her 30 feet to the other side of the hydra, um, as she's going to reappear over here on it and then she is going to uh hit it with her quarter staff uh, yeah. is, that, is that flanking uh yes uh no actually because no because Dal he's Dalen's Dalen. down he's down so thanks a lot Dalen. it is gonna hit um and she has this beautiful like vine uh, built staff and she's gonna whack the side of the hydra and at first she's gonna do six bludgeoning damage and that will be her turn for now uh, and she yells out we're almost there keep going it doesn't have much longer and, uh, that'll be Joan's turn. Where is the attention of the Hydra at now? Uh, it still looks like it's about ready to eat Dalen's body. Okay. Is it an action to pick somebody up? Um, it's... Uh, d depending on what exactly you're doing, if you're w running over to Dalen, um, to pick them up and then carry them what's your base strength i 15 so plus two okay yeah my saving throw is a plus five i would though. say i would say it's definitely your action um but you can take them half of your movement speed away from where they are so but it would be your action So it's about, we'll, we'll say it's about 15 feet towards him, and then do you have 30 total movement speed? Yeah. So you can move him another, about here. another 10 feet after you get to him. So he would move only 10 feet from where he is. It would be out of about range of here. the Hydra, though. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm going to do since it seems like it's going to try to eat him. All right. So yeah, you run about there. He's like right in front Why? of you. Scoop him up. <laughs> um, if you have any bonus actions or anything, though, you can still do those. Uh, let's see. What do I have as a bonus action? And I'll just set you guys next to each other so that he's not covering your pretty token. So, as a bonus action, I can do second wind, which is once per short rest, I can uh, regain 1d10 plus 5 HP. And that also procs Rallying Cry, which means three people within 60 feet of me also get plus five, I believe. Um, you, could, there. you could do that, but I don't think any other person has taken a hit yet, right? No, Dalen's the only one. 
But if he's stable, then I will probably save it. Yeah, yep, you can stabilize him in that whole action movement. Okay. Alright. Do you need me to roll anything to stabilize him, or are we just counting that as an action? If you're just trying to stabilize him, you don't have to. If you're, like, trying to heal him a little bit over passed out, it's a, like a medicine check, but you can just stabilize someone, make sure they don't bleed out, make sure they don't choke on their vomit or something. Then I will stabilize him for the time being. Alright, so it is Dalen's turn. He now doesn't have to make a saving throw, um, but it is the Hydra's turn, and um, I believe, let me take a look here. The other charm persists. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, oh, it didn't repeat the saving throw. Let me repeat it twice to see if it breaks out of her charm. Oh, wow, it failed. Are you kidding me? Um, so yeah, it still doesn't want to attack her, but it's gonna Good. come, it's gonna come try to head towards Joan. Who Fight me, do it. Meet me in my realm. <laughs> who unfortunately is in, um, range. So it's four remaining heads are going to try to make quick work of you like they did to Dalen. And Isn't... what is your AC? 18. Alright, you are very lucky. Only two of them hit. Okay. Um, so... Let's see what you got here. 12 damage on the first one, and 15 damage on the second one. So a total of 27 damage as its head strike down at you. Um, the other two heads, they kind of miss and just dive into the ground and bite at dirt and whatnot, but you take take a pretty good lashing. Are you still standing? Uh, I believe so, yes. Oh, so yeah. I just take a minus 27? Yep, you should just be able to type in 27 and then hit damage and you should be good. Um, but... Yeah, I'm yep. good. <laughs> uh, that is the end of the Hydra's turn. It cannot attempt to regrow a head, unfortunately, so it is Bozen's turn. Yippee! <laughs> I'm playing the defensive yeah. game. <laughs> the defensive game, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go for another suggestion, just cause. I will say if you look at it, and based on what she said, it is very bloody very bloody oh okay well then i will okay if i do a cantrip as my action i have this saying that i can do healing word as a bonus action can i do a cantrip as an action and use a spell or not nah? uh, there's like some rule where you, you can't yeah, I don't... do two spells and it's super annoying and now i always forget it um, don't know yeah but, uh, sure, go ahead. Alright, um, I'll do Vicious Mockery on it. Okay. It's, uh, what kind of save? Uh, Wisdom save. Uh, it rolled a 16. 16? Yep. Then I don't think anything happens. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Go and on. then I will use my uh, healing word on I guess the guy at the ranger. All right. First level healing word. How much do you heal him for? Uh, let's see. That would be six to healing damage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he springs back to life. <gasps> uh, uh. And is that the end of your turn? That is the end of my turn. All right, top of the round, back to Siren. All right, I'm going to have Fairy Fire on the, 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 the Hydra, so the 20-foot cube. Uh, 
Uh, I don't want it to hit um, John or anyone, just the Hydra. Okay. And that's going to be a... Dexterity? Dexterity. Yeah, level 14. Uh, it actually failed. Yeah! All right, and it's going to be... Any creature in the area on the spell is cast also at large. Operation, something like... Any attack roll. Any attack roll on the affected creature object has advantage. All right, so everybody gets an advantage on attack for it. Uh, until... For uh, up to one minute. Yep, up and to one minute. For, for my bonus, I'm going to throw another rock. <laughs> Right. Uh, throw that another up. magic stone, Yeet. which will actually be an attack roll. That's going to be a uh, 21. That'll hit. All right, and then that's going to be 1d6. Plus three, that's going to be eight points of blood team damage. Alrighty. Is that the end of your turn? Yes. Alright, Hydra's looking looking pretty bad. Caleb, you're up. Excellent. And I have, you said, uh, advantage against attack rolls? Yes. Yep. Lovely. It's not very original, uh, the, but I'm not a very original a man. Um, not that it's important. I mean, as if we couldn't see a giant Hydra. I still <laughs> love that it's glowing. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it's important. I just wanted to do something. <laughs> um, by this point, we should all know what I'm about to do. So uh, why don't we just do those? <laughs> Fireball. Uh, just blue. DM, please. Blue. It fails. Perfect. It's going to take 14 fire damage. All right. Do I need to continue? Do you describe this? Oh, lovely. Um, how do I describe this? Um, Caleb will simply say, burn in the light of Xander. And ah! out of his hands will come full on Dragon Ball Z style, just a blast of fire. I believe it's actually a... Um, uh, a line of roaring flame, 30 feet long and 5 feet wide. Um, and <laughs> and uh, I assume this will take off its final head. Uh, yeah, it just all slumps, slumps down. I love it. I love it. You guys managed that very, very perfectly. So good job as it falls and crashes to the ground. Uh, order has been restored to the forest. Yay! Uh, da, 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 da. You we in, done did it. You instantly feel like um, the, the darkness starts receding. Uh, some of the forest creatures come, you know, whistling out, uh, seemingly cheering you on like some kind of Disney movie. You have <laughs> defeated the great evil um, that was here. All, all of all of that kind of s stuff. Um, let me move this over here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. We will not reveal the whole map because I don't want to reveal to you what I changed based on your actions. <laughs> Just in case anyone plays this or, you know, whatever. Um, but here you are in the mire with the dead hydra um, Loot. forest singing um, so Daylin since you brought him back up um, he immediately starts running towards the thing to recover his long lost friends things um You will see him run through and rummage. Um, he, you see him like grab a bow um, and then a rod and like a, a leather box and stuff like that. Um, 
and you're free to do with the with the Hydra as you wish. If you want to uh, take any trophies or any proof or anything like that, you guys have done it. All of its heads. <laughs> You take every head? <laughs> every head. every single head. <laughs> They'll think it's just a normal something dragon head. I feel like, like oh, we yeah, should... That's a Hydra, but one head! <laughs> I feel like we, we should close. at least bring one head so that we can prove we dealt with whatever it is and get the fucking gold. True. But... Yeah. That is true. Alright. Taking a tooth. Taking a tooth. You, uh... You start to, you know do as you do when parties say they're going to do this and start sawing through a giant beast's head. It might take <laughs> it might take some time. Uh, you drag it back. As you guys are kind of leaving, um, the, the woman, the nymph, uh, of course, wishes you well. Um, she says, thank you. Now there will be peace in this forest and Life will return to it like it was once before. The creatures will spread out. People won't go missing. The beasts that were drawn by that thing will likely leave. I appreciate your effort and your time. Wait, before you go. You said you might be able to help our um, traveling Thanks. companion here. I'm glad you remembered that. I forgot. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. And she kind of um, walks through the grass a little bit, and you see her, like, twiddling her fingers through it as she leads you back to the glade. And uh, as you see her just seemingly drawing energy from the earth and the grass, her skin starts to glow, a vibrant glow, and she moves her hands towards you and some of the glow wisps through the air and you feel it wash over your bugbear body and whatever curse there was has been removed. Hey! Hey! Thank you so much. So very, very much. It is my pleasure. Please don't go getting charmed again. I don't know if I can do that twice in a row. <laughs> I'm just glad you were able to remove it and not have to alter it. <laughs> I was like so afraid for some reason you were gonna like high pitch voice me to where I had the high pitch thing. Uh, listen, <laughs> like, oh, this isn't that. this isn't the campaign that has literal Satan. You know, this is a happy ending. Everyone's <laughs> gleeful in the forest. Just listen to that background I don't, music. I don't <laughs> trust it. I really don't. <laughs> Joan and then she rips out your jugular. She she looks at <laughs> she looks at Joan and she says, "I do hope you find peace one day. The demons that follow you won't <laughs> last forever." And she looks at Caleb and says, "Your journey to find Xandar is one that will not be in vain. I hope you the best in your travels." And then she looks at Siren and she says. You will become very powerful and one with the force, just like myself. I see it within you. Thank you. And she just kind of seemingly floats, but not really floating off into the glade. And you guys set off back, and the, the forest has been rid of anything evil, so you make it in one piece. There's a shambling mess heading to something called the Harpers, I guess, <laughs> if, it, if it makes it there or not. Um, Only 240 miles see. away. <laughs> the, uh, we'll find out in the coming one, just <laughs> Yeah. The uh, other creatures are coming out and about, and uh, you're, you're good. That is, uh, that is the end. You make it back Woo! to the. Let's get fucking paid. Yeah, you make it. You make it back. You you just drop a huge hydra head, and uh, he he kind of looks at you and says, "Oh well, I see you did succeed." As he drops the remaining like nine hundred or whatever gold in a pouch on the table, and ta-da! We did it. Yay, a thousand did. gold for a fucking Hydra. 
Yeah. I mean, to be fair, they didn't know it was a Hydra. To be fair, that is true. To be fair. To be fair. All right. <clears throat> to that, be fair. That has been the Proving Glades. Um, yeah. Written by. I have to reopen it because I closed it already. Written by Jonathan Ball. Uh, you can get it on DM's Guild, of course. 